Well, uh... Hmm. I don't even know what I should say about this next topic, but maybe I'll take a break. Good gather idea. your thoughts? I'll gather my thoughts. I guess you've guessed what the next topic yeah. is. Yeah. Hmm. What do you say? I don't know. I mean, there's a story in the paper. I know. There's a story in the paper about Artie. And, uh... I'm so upset about the story that... You know, I was actually hoping it wouldn't come out. Yeah, and know. we were, you know, we had a couple of days of grace. I thought we were out of the woods with that. I thought that basically, I, I actually was kind of impressed that, you know, Artie's family has said all along, this is a family matter. And we're not going to uh, talk about Artie's situation. And I was glad they said that. Mm-hmm. And then I was even more sort of surprised Remarkably surprised and glad that uh, Artie's situation has been kept quiet. Well, I was shocked because, as I said, there are so many of these outlets now. There's Internet places. There's all of the TV shows Mm. that people and the the tabloids themselves. and, And somehow or other, they're always hunting for information. Yeah, and I really would love to know who the scumbag is who releases that information to the press. You know, who sneakily find something out and then tells the press because this really is a private matter and something that has got me so distressed and so upset and so just bewildered. I don't even know what to think. I'm angry about it. I'm, uh, I, I'm sad about it. I'm, I'm just all over the place emotionally about this mm-hmm. whole thing. You know, I've been working with Artie as we all have for, what, nine years or yeah. so? Okay. So, I don't know. I'm just... I'm pissed off that the story got out there, pissed off at the shithead who had, a, you know, who maybe got paid 10 bucks to tip off, you know, page six. Yeah. What do you get out of that, yeah. really? And, and honestly, I don't know what to say about this story because uh, it's such a mind boggling thing that's gone down that, um, you know, I, 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 I don't even want to in the in the in any kind of way say the wrong thing or. Or, or, I think the word is exacerbate the situation. It's just, I just, I don't even, this, this is a family matter. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Uh, I work with Artie. I love Artie. I said to people the other day, you know, just remember how great Artie is and what a wonderful guy he is. You know, he's got a good heart, Artie. And I know everybody has their demons. I've said this many times. Everyone has their demons. Everyone. Except Fred. Everyone has their demons. I think Fred demons. is a demon. He have one. He has one. Everyone has their demons and and uh that, that including myself, but this is the, he's wrestling with some serious stuff already. He well, really right is. now his demons are getting the better. They are. They are. And I only wish him well. And I don't even I hesitate to even like read the story, but I guess it's out there. Well, and, people can read it for themselves. I mean, right. I don't think that uh mm. I just feel weird about it. I don't know what to do or what to say or not that there's it's anything to do. It's a terrible position to be in it is. because it leaves you, you know, we were talking about someone else's plight the other day. And, you know, so, surely the family isn't ready to come on the air and talk about it. Right. You know, and that's the situation we're in. There's no way we could talk about this rationally or have some perspective on it because it's too close. Yeah. Well, so I don't know what to do. By reading the story, is it is it a bad thing? I don't know. I guess it's out there. It's going to be all over the place. It wouldn't mm-hmm. matter one way or the other because it is out there. Right. And it'll be, you know, once it appears there, it will be picked up by, right. by everything. all of the other services. Well, then maybe we should comment because, quite frankly, everyone else is going to be commenting. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and I'm, I can't imagine what they'll be saying. Yeah, I'm sure I, it's our fault. Oh, I don't. I don't think so. I no, think... I'm. No, it's not. But right. it's the Howard Stern show. Right. Well, uh, as all right. Well, here we go. Uh, page six. Uh, Stern sidekick and suicide try. Um, troubled comic Artie Lang landed in the hospital. Ah, uh, you know, I just feel sick about this. I don't even want. Well, that's read why it. I said I don't think you should right. read it. I, I'm sorry. If people see it, they see it. Yeah. We again. How it would be like the Johnsons coming on to talk about their daughter. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I just don't, I don't know what to do in this situation. 
There's nothing to do. But uh, Artie's demons run deeper than I ever knew. And... Well, I mean, nobody knows. I don't know how deep your demons run. Yeah. I'm not in your head. Right. But... You can only go by what people tell you. I I knew what was going on, and when I when I went on that Stern fan network... And saw uh, those... And people were just bad-mouthing Artie yeah. all over the place and and talking about... You know, basically, he's a hack, he's no talent. And it was just one negative comment after another. It just made me sick because I knew what was going on with Artie. And um, I just got really affected. That's when I said, you know, you could make a list of all the great things Artie contributed to this show. And you could you could uh, sit there and have a laugh riot just mm-hmm. to all the little off-the-cuff comments and also some of the stories he told and just all the things he's been a part of. Characters he created, right. those impressions, the... The dialogue he'll add to, you know, any situation. You know, Artie, it, the reason that I hired Artie is because right away from day one, the day I met him, with Norm MacDonald introduced me to him on the show. Norm brought him in with me, you know, into the show to be uh, interviewed. And I really didn't know Artie's work. I was not a fan of uh, the show he did, Mad TV. And I certainly didn't know him, but he came in. And he was a fan of the show, so he knew the show. And he started to tell some stories, and kind of in a, in a very charming way, he would reluctantly tell a story. You know, he you'd have to drag it out of him a little bit. Right. And, Norm sort of threw him under the bus. Right. He'd say, hey, Artie, tell him when you did all the coke, and, 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 and you know, when you were supposed to do the movie. And he'd be like, oh, I didn't want to say that. Man. And then he'd go into, and, and he'd start to say stuff, and then... After Norm would leave, I'd say to myself, gee, I love Norm, but boy, where's that guy Artie? I mean, like, when are we going to get him back in? And then Norm showed up again, I think, with Artie. And it was great. It was great fun. And when uh, Jackie was gone from the show, and I started to have certain people sit in the chair, uh, the guy I kept thinking about was Artie. You know, every time he was around. And Artie was one of those guys who would sit in the chair, and he didn't feel like he had to be on every two seconds. And at first, I didn't even know what to do with Artie. You know, at first, when we brought him into the show, I thought that maybe, like Jackie, I'd say to Artie, well, why don't you write a few lines or something, you know, because that was Jackie's primary function. He would sit there and write a line or or, or go into a, a writing session with us and write. And Artie wouldn't do that. That's not Artie's thing. Artie, Artie said, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I'm, that's not my thing. And so he would kind of sit there and every once in a while chime in. And what was so charming about it was he knew instinctively not to rain on the chemistry or the or the way Robin and I communicate. He fit himself in in a way that wasn't obtrusive, which is by no means easy. And he didn't always wait for me to direct conversation to him. And I don't want this to sound like a eulogy. Artie's alive, by the way. It was a suicide attempt. Um, and uh, but 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 the reason Artie was so great is that he fit into the show and didn't get in the way. Only contributed when he knew he had something important to say or something funny to say, which is by no means easy. Yeah, I remember. You know, like we would sometimes just in a passing comment, you know, because we were having a lot of different people sit in, hmm. and we were like, "Boy, Artie's incredible. Artie's really fun to work with." Yeah, fun he fits guy. In. Yeah, and so I really. Had great, uh, you know, I just had great admiration for Artie's talent and the way he fit into the show. And again, like Robin or Fred, I never had to sit with Artie and explain to him how the show worked. I never had to sit there and say, Artie, here's your role and this is what I want you to do. Because once you have to do that, then the guy's not right for the show. Hey, you got to kind of. And almost everybody else who sat in that chair, they usually needed some kind of guidance. Yeah. You know, I think the only other guy I could think of at that time that would have worked in that chair that I even considered was uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Mm. You know, um, but Jimmy, of course, had his uh, TV show going and all that. But uh, Artie fit the bill from day one. And Artie actually had had it with Hollywood. He was not good going off to Hollywood. He just said, I want to live in Jersey, uh, be near my mother and sister, be near all my friends. And the job made sense to him. You know, he wasn't interested in living in L.A. anymore. And I got lucky. 
And I was the lucky one because he said, okay, I'll agree to do it. And I was like, oh, great, because this makes my life easier when you got a guy with that much talent and that much um, sort of intuitive ability to understand you. It's rare. You know, and people have said to me from time to time when they would say, you know, these guys on Stern Fan Network who were making these horrible comments about Artie over and over and over again. And I know it represents a very small part of the audience. Um, but they were just making these comments. And I said, boy, how easily people forget how difficult it is to, to incorporate someone into a show and not to destroy the chemistry, but to make it great and, and all the great Artie moments mm. and all that stuff. And, you know, through it all, thick and thin, I've always tried to maintain my loyalty to Artie. And at times it's very trying because Artie has had some rough times. And um, sometimes it, even people would come to me and say, well, it's not fair. Guy's not showing up for work sometimes. And, you know, when he does, sometimes he's not all there and this and that and the other thing. And I, I guess because of his great talent and also my great affection for him, I would. Right. It wasn't that he was better. just not showing up he right. had a real problem he had a real problem so so i certainly wish Artie well i haven't spoken with Artie. robin has tim has uh you know i don't know i just haven't i don't know i don't even know. i'm just freaked out i don't know what the hell to right do. i figured if Artie wants to talk to me he's going to call me well i don't know that he's i don't think yeah. he's at that no, point yeah no. at some point i'm sure he will but, uh, you know, I only wish him well. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to be. But it was pretty, pretty upsetting when I heard the news. And it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. This is just too much, too much to bear. And my thoughts go to his mother and his sister, who I am sure are in great pain. Absolutely. Yeah. Because that's, that's mind-blowing. No, oh, I'm upset. I've been down about it. Yeah, we haven't talked much about it. Yeah, and I haven't talked. You and I haven't talked much about. It. We, I, Robin and I, spoke a little bit about it, but mm -hmm. uh, we haven't. N none of us have really talked about it because around here we weren't sure even who knew what. Right. You know, and we didn't want to be the ones spreading any gossip about Artie. There were people here who are, are, you know, close to Artie and stuff. Didn't know what was going on. And I would not, you know, they came to me and said, what's going on? And I said, it's a family matter. I, I'm, I can't comment. And I, I don't even know what I know is right. I don't know. You know I, just, I just backed off because everybody comes to me to gossip. Right. And I didn't want to gossip about Artie, you know. And I've been upset about Artie for, you know, a long time, as we all have. And, and you know, and, I, and I've had my private conversations with Artie, and that's the way I choose to deal with it, mm -hmm. you know. But anything that I have to say to Artie, I say it to Artie directly. And, you know, that's that. I've, I've told him what I think. I told him what I think he should do. But, you know, guy's got to do his thing. He's an adult. He's got to do what he wants to do. And, uh, you know, can only help by being supportive and saying uh, we're there for you. Yeah, this is a particularly difficult because yeah. you don't know what to do. You yeah. know, you're, you can only do so much. You can talk, cajole, nag, you, you know, but... As you say, it's up to that adult to make the final decision. And I'm sure some people in the audience right now are very curious. And the reason I'm not reading the article, and it's just, I don't know. There's something inside of me that doesn't want to be the one to spread. I, I know it's mm. going to be all over the place, and it's going to be in the news. Once it's in page six. But once again, you know, uh, mm. if if a relative of yours... You don't go running to the press. Right. You know, you just and this is this is a sort of family. Yeah. You know, we're very close here. We care about each other a great deal. You know, sometimes yeah. when I'm talking about the show and people, you know, they have these these images of what goes on here. And I say, I do. I love everybody I work with and I really enjoy seeing them. I enjoy seeing them thrive. And it and it tears my heart out if somebody's going through some pain. Yeah. Yeah, so it just feels weird for me to be the one, you know, maybe in a, maybe in a couple of days. I don't know what's good, but I, I, I just, I just, I, the whole thing's a mess. Well, you know what this is like? I mean, a lot of times, you know, we're the first people to tell people of others' mm. tragedies. Right. And, you know, we've had people call up and go, oh, you guys are heartless. You know, what if this was happening to you? Mm. And this is what it's like when it's happening to you. Yeah. You don't want to talk about it. Hey, Mike, you're on the air. 
Howard. Hey. Hey, man. I uh, I think Artie is the greatest thing that happened to the show. It was a breath of fresh air because, you know, Jackie he would laugh at his own jokes and he'd get upset. Jackie did a good job Let's for Let's bury Jack. yeah, bury, Forget <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> oh, you know, I that's the other thing. I know that really bothers Artie, that he was always, like, compared with right. Jackie. He goes, right. no, there was no you know. way. He's a, he's a star. Jackie right. was, a, uh, he was just <laughs> Jackie a, was Jackie and Artie is Artie. Right. They're not yeah. Too, yeah. I mean, I, to compare the two when, when people are you're reading on the Stern Network, that's ridiculous. I and mean, Artie was the greatest thing that happened to the show. And sure, he's had his upset and downs, but so did Jackie. Right. Everybody's got to understand. And if anybody, Howard, can put this in the right perspective, you would if you talked about it. I'm not asking you to. I don't get it in Florida, so I, I won't read it probably for a while. But uh, if anybody would set it straight, it would be you. And, you know, that's all I got to say about that. When you read it, it's so painful. That's why, I, I, I mean, it's just so mind-blowing to me that I... Uh yeah, you know, I understand. That's know. why I'm not even going to say yeah. All right. I just feel weird about it. I don't know. I can't even tell you why. It's probably stupid. But I, I did. Well, but maybe Robin good. says it best. It's just like, it's just, it, when you're like a family, it's like, ooh. Sure. I mean, you I'm know, You don't know what too. to say. So I, I, I know exactly where the family's coming from. Italians, you know, we keep no. everything to ourselves. Exactly. It's one family. Italian to another, you understand. So thank <laughs> yeah. you. All right, Mike. Yeah. All us yeah. Italians All us Italians know. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Uh, Pete, go ahead. Hey now. Hey now. Hey, I just wanted to say I appreciate the way you handled the Artie thing with the respect. As a recovering addict myself, I've been there, and I just love Artie. He's my hero. He's hilarious. He does great on the show, and you guys have just handled it so well. Okay. Thank you, Pete. All right. There you go. Mary Ann from Brooklyn. Howard, I know he's uh, chidden. I can't believe it, Howard. I just read it. I shared so many nasty words with Artie back and forth, but really, I cannot believe it that he is so sick. And Artie, I hope and pray that you'll get better. I don't think it's the... I just don't know what to say, Howard, and I don't... I just... I cannot believe it's it, It's a real Howard, tragedy. Artie, it's I a real tragedy. I sick to my stomach, right. and I feel like I hope and pray that Artie will be better to come back and tell us that he's well, and his mother and his sister. I met them, Howard, so many times. They were so good to me, and Artie and me had this thing going, love, hate, but that's something, Howard, I never, never expected to hear, ever. Ever in a million years. Right, and I'm Marianne. heartbroken, Howard, over Artie. All right. Thanks, Marion. Well, there you go. What can I tell you? Maybe today's sad day because Charlie Murphy's stopping by. His wife just died. I know. Yeah. Is he out already? Yeah. His Jeez. wife just died uh, a couple of weeks ago. A couple ago. of weeks ago. He's coming in. He's got something going on. I guess he had a gig. Yeah. And Curtis Lee was stopped by to tell you how he lost his gig. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, my, I, you know. <laughs> Man. Today's not a great day no. for if you're looking for an up kind of show. Well, I tell you what. Since we got back from vacation, I've been, like, sitting here thinking about Artie, you know? I mean, it's like it's it's been weird not talking about him that much. and You know, but, I, you know, it made me feel better because we were being positive. You right. know, we were just thinking well of Artie. You know, we weren't talking about the specifics and, right. you know, just the good parts. It's a miracle he's alive. So, it is. It's a miracle. Oh, I know it's a miracle. But but I don't know. I don't even know what condition he's in now. You know. Well, he's doing well physically. Mm. Hi, Mary. Hi, Howard. Um, I just read the article. I can understand why you don't want to um, read it over the air. I, I'm not even sure why I don't. I, I think maybe I'm in some kind of denial or something that I don't I want to face we it. Are. We are. We've been sitting mm -hmm. here like everything's going to be okay. Yeah. It's very painful, but do you know if there's like an address we can send cards to or anything to let I them know that? I don't know that. I don't know. You don't? Okay. I'm just really upset. I love Artie, yeah. and I really miss him. And you, I could probably send them, you could probably send them to us, and we could get them to Artie. That's okay. okay. You could do that. Then okay. we'll, we'll take care of it. Okay, thanks, Howard. Give Fafa Fooey something to do. Okay. <laughs> do you think this will go well? Yeah. You, you know what? Actually, I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to refute what Robin just said. <laughs> don't send them here because Fafa Fooey's head will explode. I don't think he can handle one more thing. Um, you know, it'll all end up in my bag. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, Artie will never see the cards. <laughs> Mary, don't send them here. It's a big mistake. Oh, All right, thank you. Can you can send them here. Thank you. Robin will handle everything. <laughs> uh, Gary has medicated Pete, I remember, to help him with uh, the cards. There you go. He's his assistant. Yeah. Uh, Gary's taking medicated Pete under his wing. He's <laughs> been staring at me all morning. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? What are you going? I don't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's like over <laughs> Gary's <laughs> shoulder like a, pa- Pete, a parrot. You just, you just saw my day. Pete, what are you doing? Oh, Pete, beautiful. what are you doing? <laughs> what? Oh, go in already. Yeah, come go in. Go in Gary. <laughs> no one. I said we should keep Pete as an intern, oh. but nobody knew what to do with him. Are you doing anything out there? Staring at Gary. Yeah. So yeah. what do you do? You just stand yeah. there. Does Gary have you doing anything? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm like answering phones and stuff. Yeah. What are you answering? Yeah. What kind of phones are you answering? <laughs> exactly. Somebody, somebody answering phones. Every minute. You mean you're screening the phones? <laughs> That's a scary no. thought, by no, the way. Right. Wow. Howard, the interns, wow. We have three interns that answer the phones in the morning, not the phones that will screens, but the, just the reg- people call on the regular line. And we get a lot of good stuff that way. So someone's got to answer those phones. So medicated Pete's like the... the He's the gatekeeper? He's the gatekeeper. He's one of the gatekeepers, yes. <laughs> But, but he does, he, Pete, today's been good, but the first day, he must go to me 10 times, he goes, need anything? Need anything? I said, Pete, I promise you, I'll tell you what I need you. <laughs> yeah, Pete. I'm in his face. It's good. Yeah. I know no. it might get boring yeah. out there, because we're having trouble thinking of stuff for you to do. Well, maybe we'll <laughs> give you the Artie mail. You want to handle the Artie mail? Sure. All right, so if cards come in from Artie, yeah. for Artie, yeah. you'll compile them and get them to Artie? Um. Personally, I don't know how to get it to him. Personally. Well, just give them yeah. to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll, to Robin. I'll, 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 I'll take care of it in the in the, yeah. in the time Me or fashion. Tim? Yeah. So, you yeah. see, Pete, um, when medicated Pete was here last semester, uh, he, he was with Scott the engineer, yeah. so we had a function for him. Now he's kind of like different setting this time. This time, it's like nobody knows what to do with him because <laughs> I just said, we just wanted to keep him around. We just want to keep him around. So I hear primarily he just lingers around John Hine, and I, I think it's getting a John. I don't know. What, you like John Hine, right? John's a cool dude, actually. Yeah. So yeah, like you just kind of hang back there with him. Yeah, we talk about stuff. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should be our spokesperson for the Artie situation. If people call oh, in, God. like you could just be like a grief counselor. You know, seriously, I wouldn't even know what to say because that, that's a that's a that's a terrible situation. So that, you perfect. wouldn't even know how to handle that. That's you know? exactly what you need to say. It's right. tough. Say say to the people, I don't know what to say. This is a terrible situation, and move on. Right. Go on to the next call. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we'll uh, think of some junk for you to do. Don't worry. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to work out. Yeah. He's only here two days a week now. We, I know. we only have him two days. It's Mondays and Thursdays now. So uh, uh, so what do you do on like Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday? Just trying to, you know, hanging out and doing Stay at uh, home with your mom and stuff? Yeah. You yeah. mean you're doing nothing? Well, well I'm, I, 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 am, I am getting myself out there because people, people are, are recognizing me now. Yeah. Or, or around town and stuff. So, what, what do you mean you're getting yourself out there? Yeah, are you parlaying it into something? I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. know you have a yeah. website. I do. Yeah, we were on there. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good website. Uh, <laughs> yeah, way to go. A lot of hits, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 How many hits? Is JD's you? in the house. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, JD. Uh, hey, uh, we got. I don't know. Yeah. Did you want to answer your question? Uh, yeah. What's up? What? <laughs> <laughs> we got an email. I got an email about Pete. That he got like thrown out of a bar recently for like like sticking his tongue out at a girl and stuff. Wait, man, don't get crazy. <laughs> what are like you a, doing? You're acting like a rock star. This was over the holidays. <laughs> I, I I got I I uh, I overindulged a little bit and, <laughs> and yes, this is. This what is did true. you do? Well, I I got a little crazy at <laughs> at, at the local at the local tavern. And, uh, and you stuck your tongue out at a girl? And uh, I don't, I don't even remember I did that. Uh, you were that wasted. It was at the Globe Hotel in uh, down down in down in Jersey, and uh, and uh, yeah, I got a little got a little rambunctious, as they say, <laughs> well, over the you, holidays. So. Do you go in there and tell them you're medicated, Pete, and then you medicated, Pete? Well, the the uh, everybody there knows who I am. So. Yeah, do you ever say, don't you know who I am? <laughs> You're do lucky you, to get my attentions. Uh, someone told me you're selling T-shirts now, huh? Yeah, so I'm what's getting that, that going. Yeah, what, what do you? What do you? What's the T-shirt look like? What's it say? Well, we haven't. Uh, I'm working with somebody on on like a design, so we haven't. Come, we have, I haven't really come up with a with like a definitive logo yet. Oh, so uh, no. we're designing it. But uh, hmm, guys, parlaying himself. <laughs> and someone be, told me you're in talks with Beetlejuice's manager to book appearances. Yes, I am. Yeah. 
I am. Yeah. He's little enough to throw, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. You can do some dwarf toss on this kid. Wow. Yeah. How about a blank white T-shirt? Like that'd be the medicated T T shirt. <laughs> right. I love those, and they don't offend anyone. Right. You know? Nobody's reading your chest. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, yeah. Uh, listen. Good luck with well, the it's internship. Good, it's good to see you guys again. Yeah. Good to have you back. Yeah. We'll figure out. Did what you miss us? You miss us on the other days? Actually, yeah. Um, it's <laughs> lo- looking, lo- looking, uh, looking forward to coming into work. You know? yeah. Your mom cool, must so. love us because we get you out of the house, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's nice that you have somewhere to go. Yeah, You've been working on your stand-up at all? I have. Yeah. yeah. I, I, jokes? I, I mean, I have this whole Tourette's thing. Like, like it's, it's, it's cool, you know. What do you got there? What, what kind right, of jokes? You got Tourette's material? Well, it's, it's all improv, but it's based on the Tourette's. So, so it's just, uh, you know, I, I just... Um, what do you do? It's I'll improv. Just, I'll just go out and... And talk of the cusp, you know. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Do a little of it here. What do you do? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll just say, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, tw- I'm twitching. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't stand up, and and uh, oh my god, and you know, the Sounds chicks, good. Uh, the chicks want, the chicks must think I'm nuts, and you know. Just sort of, sort of go and... You're already 100% better than Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't say anything. And he does stand up. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do yeah. the other days? Like, okay, so here we know you come in and we're trying to think of stuff for you to do so you can right. intern. But right. what do you do the other days around the house? Like, you just, you know, just sit just there? Do like, you know, house stuff. Like what? You know, like, I don't know. I think on those days he's on his own. He's thinking of things for himself to do himself. What do you do? Like you just like sit there for a while and eat breakfast and yeah, and 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 then I'll you know like I said I'm I'm working on this t-shirt thing, so I'm so I'm down with with these um with the guys at the at the at the um t-shirt place. Yeah, is the t-shirt that hard to design? How long are we going to take with this? (laughs) Hopefully a long time. (laughs) Coming up with ideas, you know. Has anyone expressed interest in the t-shirt? Actually, yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of people on um on my on that Facebook page who uh, who seem to uh, have an interest. They want to buy one. Yeah. Right. They don't even know what it is, and they want it. They have no idea, but but they think they think the uh, they think the idea is kind of cool. So. All right. Yeah. So you got that going. So you can't spend every day. So he's day. working on his T-shirt. So uh, yeah, I, I I can't spend all the time on that. So uh, other other times I'll you know I'll just go out and do uh, do other stuff. You know, like what? Try to try <laughs> to keep myself doing? occupied. Yeah, we're trying to get some specifics, like yeah. what you're up to. Yeah. So well, after the T-shirt uh, meeting, where do you go? Yeah. I'll, I'll, like yesterday, what was your day? <laughs> what time did you wake up? Yesterday, I um, I woke up at. Ten o'clock, ten thirty. All right, late in the morning. All right, yeah. wow. slept in. Must yeah. be nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I wanted to listen to the show, but um, missed it. Thank yeah, God, we're it. in repeat. Then what'd you do? <clears throat> um, I uh, took a shower, got dressed, blah blah blah. Right. Went well, down, started this T-shirt thing with. Uh, oh, you do that on the phone? With no, I actually go go into the go go into the place like yeah. physically. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Put in a few hours. <laughs> yeah, put in a few hours and. I actually uh, got to call some chick, and we actually had a cup of coffee yesterday, so that was kind of really. Cool. So, How'd that yeah. happen? About uh, what? What'd you call her about? I just um, well, she had given me her number, so I I, I ran that into that midget her. girl. No, this is oh. somebody totally different. Wow. Where did you meet this girl? Well, what happened was I, I ran into her because she had an accident, a car accident with um, she got into a car accident. That's what I'm trying to say. So I, I went over and, and tried to assist her, tried to help her out, and she was kind of scared, oh. nervous, and stuff, and hmm. and she was getting all frazzled and stuff. So I said, she knew you from the show, or just like some? No, some, this no. was this was. She had no idea who I was. Wow, so, nice. So that's how he meet women. He waits for accidents. <laughs> that's a cool move. <laughs> and like you know, one thing led to another. So did you hit her with your car? Is that what? No, I mean? <laughs> somebody, somebody. I, I I I was just like walking by, and I and, right. I, and I noticed something was going on. You know? Yeah. So you so went just, and helped her out. So I just figured I'd I'd go over and and and, uh, and help out. Nice know? looking yeah. woman. She's cute. Yeah. Full sized. She's Full like size. she's my my she's slightly taller than, my, than me. She's like a brunette, so she's kind of cool. So when she was all frazzled from the accident, you assisted her, and then you said, "Hey, let me have your number." Yeah. And then she said, "Okay." Yeah, she she gave it to me. And then I, I was you called her up and I said, "I want to meet you for coffee or for something." For a surprise. Yeah. Wow. And she met with you. Yeah. And how'd that go? It went well, actually. Did, but, was she interested in you? 
Unfortunately, she just got out of a, a bad relationship. She told me she's told me she's not she's not ready to jump into something. Yeah. You know what so. happened, Howard? <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like a monsters episode, <laughs> right? <laughs> she was shook up from the. That's right. She got I, I think she was all frazzled. Right, and then she <laughs> sat down with him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's a big fan of yours on the phone, real quick, because I got to get to Charlie Murphy. Sure. But there's a big yeah. fan of yours on the phone. Wants to say hi. Sure. Hi. What's up? What's going on? <laughs> you what do you like to do? Your name is uh, Pete, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Ask Pete a question. So what do you like to do? Go ahead. Uh, what's up? I don't know. Like to hang out and stuff? And exactly. Yeah. Chill. You like to drink? <laughs> Yeah. All right, Pete, thank you. What are you into? What are you into? <laughs> okay. I'll talk to you later, man. Later, man. All right. Why do you right. want to talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Charlie Murphy is here. i got to take a break, though, All first. Right. And, you know, that's a pretty cool thing, Pete's hanging out at dangerous yeah. intersections and <laughs> meeting women. <laughs> she can, it is like a Monsters that's episode. The best. You know what? Tower TV should do a, a, a special where Pete tells the story and then they do a reenactment. <laughs> and then make it like the Munsters. The girl gets out of the car and she's like, you know, I, th I met a guy, but I'm not sure what was going on. He, but he called me for coffee. <laughs> and she goes and sees him. And then she like, she gets out of there. Wonder how, wonder how quick the lunch was over. It was just coffee. Coffee. And then she said, I, I'm in a long-term relationship, yeah. but I just got out of it. And then, Give me an espresso. Something right. short. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Pete, welcome back, man. Thanks, Tom. Good to be back. Excited to be back. Good to be back. Just In gotta the mix. find. You gotta find something to do around In here. The mix again. Yeah, exactly. I'm sort of a little. Uh, I'm like. I'm like. Uh, I don't know. I'm like a show of vagabond right now. But you're you're answering uh, some phones, right? Answering phones, you know, pretending to pretending to work. Do you pretending like that? You like answering the phones, or you'd rather have more hands-on? Uh, um, Duties. I, I like the hands-on, but whatever. I mean, maybe be on the air some more. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's kind of cool. So, the whole thing. You Just know, happy to be doing back. a little bit of doing, doing a little bit of everything around here. It's kind of cool. So, you know. You got a website up, man. Jeez. I do. I do. You I, get, uh, getting t-shirts out there. Um, in the middle of that right now, and um, you know, we'll see what happens. A rising so, star. Seems like it's a good thing. To... What the fuck? Scott Goodstein. Scott Goodstein? Scott Goodstein. Doug Goodstein. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, I, I had Scott on my mind. I mean, um, Do you but, miss uh, working for Scott? It actually felt different uh, coming in here the other day because I, I was like get, all getting used to like going into Scott's office and stuff. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, not, no, no, it's like it's a totally different thing now. So, but um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. cool. All right, thanks, Pete. Hey, man. No problem. Hello, how are you? How are you doing today? Uh, it's early, right? The camera in the face, right? First day. <laughs> Thanks for that. Sorry. Yeah, so I, you know, I had to do terrestrial radio till three in the morning. So it's now oh, wow. quarter to six, quarter to seven or something. So, so it's, uh, tough. So what brings you back? Um, I am uh, promoting Celebrity Rehab Three. Got a lot of stuff to talk about because this this group was really uh, intense. It was uh, you know Tom Sizemore and Heidi Flies and Dennis Rodman and 
Mackenzie Phillips. So all people you guys know, I think. Yeah, we did. So, yeah. So, but they were they were great, but they were tough, and uh, so I imagine these guys will have questions for me. What do you think? Yeah, I think there's gonna be a lot of a lot of things to talk about today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say it that way. It always scares me. Well, Hardy's not here, right? No, he's not. So that's one bullet dodge for me. Yeah. So, uh, but it'll be fine. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to the guys. I really am. All right. It's, uh, I go I go long without talking to Howard. It bothers me. <laughs> no, really, I like I like I like Artie. I really miss Artie too, and I, I hope whatever's going on with him, that he's doing well. Is it? So. Is it? How is it different when he's not here? Because you've been here. Well, um, you know, when it's here, it's when been not. different. It, well, when it's, when Artie is here, it's different every time I'm here because <laughs> it depends on move Art, what mood Artie's in. Um, but uh, has he has he ever not been here when I've been here? I don't think so, right? Oh, so this is the first. I think. Yeah, I think. Maybe Gary can tell us, but I, I think so. So it'll just be Robin abusing me. <laughs> All right, well, we'll okay. see you in there. We'll do. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Drew is here. I want to talk to him. I was just reading some one of those gossip magazines, which I often do, and Dr. Drew had his shirt off at some, on some vacation. And oh, they, did they get him with the uh, with the trunks and topless? Yeah, but they were saying, like, it's like Dr. Drew is a secret hunk. Did you see that? Secret yeah. hunk? Yeah. Mm. You, oh, you posed for that. No, no, I did not. Oh, bullshit. No, I did not. You know you're a secret kids. hunk. And it, Where were you? I was in Hawaii, and it, I was flipped out by it. I, I complained to the hotel. I'm like, are you kidding me? Why don't you tell us? you got these guys camped out all over the, the place. Hawaii is the worst. I didn't. What do I know? I, and, I, and, and my wife, my wife you, know, you know, women are about themselves, and so she's, yeah. like, scrutinizing it with a jeweler's loop and pissed off. And I didn't think was, you looked that no, good. No, she's looking at they herself, ca- she's looking oh. at her stuff, and then the kids are in there. The one bad. I saw of you, there was no kids. It was just Thank you. Thank God. That was Us Weekly. We've just yes. printed that one thing. You, you know? were topless. Yeah. <laughs> I, Strange, I was running around all day without trunks either. I missed that part. So I read that your workout routine is very peculiar to me. You run for a month, yeah, they, and then this, you work out with weights for a month. Hi, Robin. Hello. How In other you? words, you won't do both. No, I do do both, but I, I'm compulsive, and so I started going in one direction. All of a sudden, I find after a few weeks, I'm just lifting weights. I stopped running at it, and I don't even notice it. Then all of a sudden, I'll start compulsively running and doing less weightlifting. It's just the way I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm my brain. Meanwhile... I got to congratulate you. This season coming up. Now I haven't seen it. Yeah. But if you, if you blow it and and this isn't a good season then there's something wrong with you because this is you got a group there that's I w- I would think toxic. <laughs> You're talking about uh, celebrity rehab now, not sex addiction. Celebrity right. rehab. Celebrity rehab starts on Thursday. And I applaud you on celebrity sex addiction. I would say it was probably my top three shows this past Thank season. You. Thank you for that. It, I it, mean, that in uh, Llamas. Th- that w- <laughs> Leave it to Llamas. <laughs> love that. I, I'm not kidding. Love Leave it to Llamas. Love celebrity sex addiction. Yeah. Uh, you know... Well, you- this, this is the most difficult group we've ever treated. And, and diverse, too, because we've got Dennis Rodman, who could not get... He, he's court-ordered to treatment. He's going to go to prison. And you would have thought uh, none of that. Highly would, motivated, right? Uh, no, not the <laughs> least. I mean, so resistant. He's going to, to prison? Wow. Mm-hmm. Or what's jail. Go- jail, What's going on? He uh, had another domestic violence and another disturbance at his house. And he's, the police go there like 700 times or something. Wow. Yeah. and uh, Is he mentally ill? Well, his, his I, I can't say that per se, but his level of the resistance was so profound. I actually ended up getting brain scans on him and showing him that his brain was not working right at all. It isn't working no, right. No, it is not working right. And that didn't matter to him. <laughs> when a guy well, when g- your brain's not working right, why would <laughs> why, it? Why matter? Why let it matter? <laughs> the, now, the court ordered him to go to celebrity rehab? No, they ordered him to treatment, and they right. accepted it. But he had to, I had to be satisfied with his level of participation, and I was not. So, in other words, you said to the court, he did not cooperate. Lock him up. Lock him up. They, they sent me a letter from what he'd been doing in Florida. I'm like, this is BS. This is not what... This this is, this is not who I'm dealing with. I don't know who wrote this damn letter, but this is BS. What was he doing in uh, Florida? Supposedly some kind of outpatient program. And they're like, oh, he's participating. He's active. He's fully... Pro-. I'm like, oh, they were uh, glowing. Like, yeah, I'm like, are you was kidding it, me? Was it sort of like what Artie was doing for a while, like when he had the two cops watching him? And No, uh, this was actually a legitimate, but like a three-hour-a-day, three-days-a-week kind of an outpatient program. And, and you felt it wasn't enough? I, well, I think he schmoozed them, and, and he got somebody to write a letter that was nothing to... No reflection of what was really going on. When you say to Dennis Rod, yeah. Dennis, look, I, even though this is a TV show and some of this is shtick in the sense that, you know, look, there's a camera on you, you've got to take it seriously. No, I, I watched some footage of me going, Dennis, he goes, look, here's my problem. I'm going, Dennis, I got a problem. Here's the letter from the court. I have to be satisfied you're participating actively. 
I got to write the letter back. And if you don't participate, I ain't writing that letter. And he's like, yeah, sure. So I'd rather go to jail, he says. He just, he just, uh, he he's doesn't, gone. He doesn't even go that far. It's just like, boom, whatever, boom, whatever. Boom, the lights. Whatever. Yeah, just whatever. I, whatever. I don't know what he's thinking because he never tells me. <laughs> what is the personality affect there? You're a, a um, psychiatrist. I, no, I'm actually an internist addictionologist. That's my kind oh, of but, whatever. But, uh, Say you're a psychiatrist. He's, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier. People he, never heard of internist addictionologist. I know. It's hard yeah, for me to Yeah, that's a right. new People, one on yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, that sounds kind of lame. Addictionologist. Yeah. Uh, no offense, but <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I think you made that up. Didn't make it up, but it does sound lame. Go ahead. So... I just all I get is just deep um, rigidity and resistance, and I, I actually. But what is that? Well, uh, be honest. Well, I actually thought it was autism, uh, right? And so I actually haven't seen an autism specialist when, when he's in treatment. I don't remember whether this was this was all a big blur because I, it was intense. This whole thing was very intense for me, and because uh, again, as, as you know, this to these people having a good experience and good outcome is deeply important to me. And I had him saw, see an autism specialist from UCLA, right? And, uh, and he thought maybe it was more of an Asperger's type thing that, that was making it difficult for him because he was he Dennis Rodman can focus like nobody I've ever seen. He literally would would read. Is he retarded? Run. Maybe no, no, nothing like that. No, no, it's not cognitive. Did you give him an IQ test? I didn't, but I, I can tell you that he's a smart guy. It's not right. cognitive. It, it's more of a. He can hyper-focus on things. I mean, think about it. The world's greatest rebounder. He can focus on something like that. Right. But in terms of processing and objectivity and insight, uh-uh. It is not there. So when you turn to Dennis Rodman and you say at the end of this, look, you didn't participate Oh, he properly. finally did. He finally did. He opened he, up. He, he started going. He started, But it took quite, like, literally, like, dragging him, kicking and screaming. So he isn't going to jail because of the letter you wrote, is he? No, I wrote a pretty good letter for him. You said, okay, he I participated. Up, yeah, he did. He so did. he is not going to jail. He is not going to jail. Does he oh. need more? He, needed, he had to do 100 hours of community service, and oh. we had to supervise him through that and make him do that. And that was oh. hard to get him to wow. do that. And is he a sex addict? I mean, here is a guy who told me on my show... He was married to what I think is one of the most beautiful women in the world, Carmen Electra. Yeah. And uh, certainly she could have done him some good, even in terms of his celebrity and all of this. And within days of their marriage, he's in bed having sex with a woman. Carmen Electra walks in on him. Two women. That what happened? Two women. Yeah. And she says, what are you doing with these women in bed? And he said, what women? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking that, about. That is a perfect... Yeah. That is what it's like dealing with Dennis day in and day out. Right. You go, you go Dennis, what's with the green suit? What yeah. green suit? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, she said of, to him, what is with these women? Yeah. And he says, they dropped was, out of the so ceiling, frustrating. he said. Yeah. He, told, he so, said they so fell so out Dennis. of the ceiling. That is so Dennis. But, do I, you like him? I do like him. You like I Dennis I, 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 I can't say I was... Enjoyed dealing with him at the beginning, but I ended up. And he kept saying, "Yeah, you'll like, you'll get to know me," and I, and he, I did. But isn't he physically intimidating? Aren't yeah, you? Yeah, he yeah. is. He, he is. could crush you. He, oh yes, yeah. He, he could beat he, you. His up. thing with me, he actually offended me at one point because he kept wanting to me to be. I, there were so many times during group, I'm going, Dennis, I'm just a person. I'm not. I'm not some magical wizard. I'm just a person. I'm here to help you. I've got some specialized knowledge. But you don't. I'm not some kind of. Right, yeah, and and he wanted he wanted to att- put me up on a pedestal and then attack me, and I kept saying no. That's I, I don't care. You you don't want to help. You go to jail. That, that's your. Well, business. don't you think he's angry with you because you can't fill the black hole inside of him? He has such neediness and he has such hunger and so well, many needs and he has no father. And, well, and don't you think he's angry with you? He he wants to be angry with me. I think, but we never sure. we never had that kind of thing going. But but. Uh, he started treatment. It's funny. We're talking a lot about Dennis. I know you want to talk about Heidi and uh, Tom. Oh, I'll get really to that. really where it's more interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, Dennis is pretty interesting. Dennis yeah, this is, is pretty, pretty interesting. interesting. And, and, and he, he starts out treatment going, I have no family. I literally, like, he, I, I go, what's your family history? Where the, I don't know. I don't know anything. He has a sister. Well, we end up getting his mother and bringing him out, bringing her out. Oh, no kidding. And she is delightful. She is a, and strangely enough, the, one, the, one, the, reason, the way we were able to make inroads with him is that we have this woman that works in our facility named Shirley. And Shirley somehow, she's one of these sort of big, um, self-assured African-American women who really just doesn't take any grief from guys yeah. like Dennis. And she was able to kind of bust his balls a little bit. And he became like a little boy with her, strangely. And she was able to get through to him. And it turned out mom's name was Shirley. Shirley Ann, which is this woman's name. Why is and it that he said to you, I don't have a mother, I, I don't have a sister? Never you don't know. I don't know. I, I, and I don't, you know, the, the, right there. That's is this the, his biological mom or yeah. the, mo- the family he moved in with? No, you know, the, he we, moved in with a family. I know. We brought the biological mom out and she could right. not have been a more wonderful person. She was delightful. So she what was, do you and think? She was like, Dennis, you're forsaking your family. We love you, son. You can't forsake your family. When was the last time she saw him? It may have been the last time I, maybe when I had a session with him. And what, huh? when she turned to him and said, we love you, son, why have you forsaken your family? What did he say? 
he he I'm not sure if at that point this is where the stuff gets funky with the cameras rolling. I, right. I, I'm, he had some resentments towards his sister, and he kind of like didn't want to talk about it. And my job is not to out somebody with stuff they don't want to tell. I you see. Know what I mean? Is that but, the problem though with this kind of therapy that because the cameras are rolling, people are not going to get real therapy because they were afraid to open up? Maybe Dennis would have opened up and maybe cried and um, embraced you know, his for, sister. For addicts and alcoholics, early in treatment, right? Too intensive a work it doesn't doesn't serve them. It makes them want to go use drugs. Uh, oh, I was going to ask you, you about know, that, because so, sometimes so, I think you should get more psychological with them, but you avoid that. You avoid it. Like that, the, One of the things for me in doing the sex rehab program, you know, I brought this team together of experts that do sex addiction every day. I don't do that treatment every day. One of the things that shocked me in that was how fast and how deep they got into some heavy stuff. We, we tend to go, look, we know that stuff's there. Six months from now, when you're stable, not using drugs in your recovery, then we get into that stuff. I noticed on your season of sex addiction, which I thought was terrific, the, the star of the show was a girl who people don't know. She was on my show. This Panish, Car Carrie, Ann. Carrie Ann Panish. She was on my show. She was delightful. I had no idea. Yeah. Then I saw the show and I said, she's a fucking vomit. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen yeah, a, a, a more... She's a person when you get to know her better, you don't like her. I've never seen a more toxic <laughs> human being. And now you're having her back on Celebrity Rehab. Well, in my, she turns out she was strung out on speed. Okay. We, didn't, we didn't know it. She right. kept denying, denying. I kept kind of thinking she was. Well, you, yeah, you sort of yeah. indicated you thought her behavior it was indicative it, it just of like it, but, substance abuse. But she was taking Adderall, which was showing up as amphetamine in her urine. And I, and, so, and the psychiatrist saw her and said, yes, she needs Adderall. It's like, oh, for God's sakes. If she's an amphetamine addict, we're giving her Adderall. Horrible idea. Right. Well, that's what ended up happening. So we offered. She actually does pretty well in somebody rehab. It's a more, much more appropriate treatment for her. There's a great case for somebody that can't tolerate all that deep work. They just can't do it. When you hear that you have Heidi Fleiss and Tom Sizemore, who have had a legendary toxic relationship, yes. do you smack your hands together and, and lick your lips and go, my God, this is going to be a great season? No. I, I, I Listen, all of it is just heavier lifting for me. <laughs> Isn't he court-ordered away from <laughs> Heidi Fleiss? Not that I'm aware of. Here, I, I don't get involved in the casting, right? Because okay. I, I can't go, hey, Tom, you're, you're severely strung out. But wait till the cameras heat up in a month. It's right. like, no, I gotta, you got to go get treatment right now. Okay. So I stay out of it. All I need to know is that they go through a very intensive consent process where they were really clear they're rendering consent. Tom Sizemore to is nuts, right? Is he, Tom is, Sizemore is a severe drug addict. He's not nuts. He's a severe drug addict. When, when he, you when say severe, using, what does nuts. that mean? Heroin and, uh, and amphetamine. I mean, really bad. Is he, he, so he came to you, he was using? We, oh yeah, he was. Oh yeah, and when he was, he wasn't married to Heidi Fleiss. He was her boyfriend. That was, but that was years, years, years ago. Now, now you should know that, that. And he beat her. Didn't they? Didn't they get into physical he, he fights? They did. did. For that. There's a little bit of back and forth with them about that. Mm -hmm. uh, he claims he was exonerated. She claims there's all this proof. They, they, they did. Did us they the, come to blows during no, uh, no, your season with no, them? No, no. How well, long is it? How long? Well, well not in slavery rehab. In sober, they go into sober house too. The two yes. of them, and that's where things begin to unravel a little bit. Uh, physical fighting. Mm, I end up basically having to move into the sober house. Yeah, isn't that <laughs> isn't it dangerous for the two of them to be? I mean, it is yeah, a I mean, little is it really bit. Really good for them to try to get sober together, Doctor Drew. Isn't it a little bit? Uh, toxic and dangerous to you put know, those two in a room if together. If they were family members or presently romantically involved, we would never consider it. It's right. just not possible. They claimed they had they had uh, solved their issues. They had no problem. They would be fine with it. They really were very reassuring, and they were most of the way. They really. How does she look? She started to do a tremendous amount of speed, uh, of, of speed, and also uh, plastic surgery with the big lips. What and I all can tell you is Heidi, that Heidi by the end of treatment, really looks good. She does. Yeah, you she clean does. her up a little. Yeah, bit. yeah, a lot. Get her out of the heavy makeup and all that mm. kind of stuff. She's sick. She gets sick. She's a full-on detox, big detox. What was what? What is she into? Speed. Vicodin and speed. Yeah. Vicodin and speed. Yeah. Well, how do people get addicted to Vicodin? I've taken these Vicodin and then nothing happens you to me. You don't have the gene. You ain't got it. I, I don't and have it. And you don't take as much as they do. Well, no, but the <laughs> I took two of them with a couple of glasses of wine, which you're not supposed to do, and nothing happened. <laughs> I did the I don't same know. thing when it's, I had a toothache. It's a case. I didn't in point have no of, toothache. I was looking to get high. Oh, stop it. It's a case in point of how the biology of the individuals differ in the relation to chemicals. And for instance, when I take Vicodin, I hate how I feel. Sure. In, in fact, I I had a hernia operation and I was supposed to take two Vicodin and, and I kept avoiding it. I didn't want to take it because I felt and the pain got so so severe I started having suicidal ideation. What and is I, that? What is wrong I with started you? thinking like I'm, I, I get out of it. I got to get this pain. It's too much. I can't tolerate it. I, maybe I should kill myself. Thinking. Not, not from one Vicodin? No, no, no. From no, the before. pain. Oh, I and, see. And that's how much I didn't want to take the Vicodin. Right. That's how bad the, the Vicodin made me feel. Have that's you yourself I better take this decided that maybe you should take some drugs to see what it's like no. to see what the patients are going through? <laughs> Would you ever try heroin to just no, understand no. what everyone is 
was no, going through. I, and, I'm, and I'm confident I wouldn't like it because I don't like opiates. I feel like hell on them. It's funny with this show. You got some good. Now, you got Mackenzie Phillips. Mackenzie was great. That's a hot ticket. Yeah. Who knew? She, I, you know, I knew what was going on. I didn't know there would be such a public. Does thing she talk her. about her father she raping does. her? I knew yeah. her father. Yeah. It's a delightful he, guy. Yeah. Never raped you. Never touched he, he me didn't, once. He didn't, yeah, there was the one rape, I guess. I, I mean, she talks about it as, you know, when, when a child gets into that situation, her perception was that she was consenting to it, that she was an active participant. But there's been some but, controversy with her where they're saying perhaps it didn't happen, that she that all drug addicts are liars. Now, I'm not saying this about her. Drug I, addicts I are liars, but it right. fit it fit very well what was going on with her. You feel she's telling the mm-hmm. truth. Yeah, it, it fit. You believe her story that her father was having sexual relations with her. Yeah. Is that For a very common purposes. thing? Very common. It is, huh? Yeah. That's got to be the sickest goddamn yeah, thing. Yeah. Particularly opiate addicts, they have a lot of sexual abuse, and family members are the perpetrators. I have said on the air that I believe yeah. that there are so many sexual predators out there that especially in the case of child rape, yeah. uh, I believe in castration. And I don't know why this country doesn't talk about it more. What do you think of that? Well, uh, listen, I, I've gone through this. You've, you've talked to enough trauma survivors here on this show, you know, all the strippers and stuff like that. You know, they, these people are all been through that stuff. Uh, thank God and, for and, it. And, <laughs> I mean, otherwise, you wouldn't have a show. Put you out of you're, right. Right. Now you're against the castration. <laughs> I, I, I need it. <laughs> no, but, 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 but be serious. And, and uh, maybe you've seen what I've seen, because, of course, we talk to these same kind of folks on Loveline that are out there in the community, which is that come... You know, even 15 years ago, 10 years ago, people were like, oh, sexual abuse has always been around. We're just talking about it more now. No. No. It's a, it's it's a uh, it's an, an epidemic. epidemic. It's an epidemic. Right. And look, and somebody that's a perpetrator doesn't perpetrate on one kid. They perpetrate right. on lots of them. And, they, well, and then shown, the kids perpetrate on other kids. And it's shown that you can't rehabilitate these uh, predators. Uh, I don't think that's true. See, he uh, was beef for re- uh, rehabilitation. I, yeah, I would be. And I, they're always at risk. I'll give you that. And they need to be carefully monitored. But but I Fred wanna... has this theory that all of you know, like the internet and and the proliferation yep. of child pornography yep. is creating more. It, we don't know the mm-hmm. the impact of. Pornography, I don't right? understand something with you. Uh-huh. I'm going to get back to this season Please. of uh, celebrity rehab because uh, yes. it's a, an interesting cast. And I want to ask you about some of the people, but yeah. there's something I don't understand about uh-huh. you. I mean, you're a, you're a doctor. Mm. You must make a good living. Now, I've read where, like Andy Dick, the mm. comedian, yes, you are actually his doctor outside of any television show. Correct. That you are considered his private physician or mm. whatever. Mm. And that at times Andy Dick gets so off the wall that he calls you in the middle of the night because he's feeling like he's going to do drugs and this and that. Does Ant, when Andy is no longer on the TV show, are you paid to be his doctor? In other words, do you do ca- charge him yeah. a fee? Yeah, when he comes see me in my office and stuff, sure. You do? Yeah. So is Andy I'm, okay? I'm, I'm, so do you have a say? private practice? Yeah, yeah. But my, I have two different... I'm wondering how you make a living. I mean, the TV show can't pay that much. No, no, no. It, I, I have two different jobs. One is I have a general medical practice, which I've been right. doing for 25 years. Then I run an addiction recovery program at a psychiatric hospital. It sounds so I, very, very like a very do, time consuming. It can a, be, but I have partners where I, I basically head teams, and so I can oh, move in and out very flexibly. Oh. I've spent most of my career building that flexibility. Wait a second, you do the radio show. Radio is my primary living. Does it pay a lot of money? It's my primary living. Yeah. It's a couple million bucks. No, <laughs> not, it's not, not not stern living. No, come on. It, no, 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 no. You no, don't no, make no. you make a million. No. At you one time I did. From the radio what, show, uh, you don't get a million dollars. No, no, no. But, but it's but compared Isn't to... Isn't it syndicated listen, all over the country? Yeah, on, yeah, how, yeah. Many, how many stations is that on? On 60, I think 60. 67. Yeah. But, it, but listen, it, practicing medicine, you're, you're lucky if you make $150,000 a year. That's Stop a lot it. of money. You That's can make $300,000 a year. If you minimum really killed being. yourself. You really? really killed yourself, yeah. That, but that's a lot of people. People hear you talk about that. We used no, to say, I always thought doctors made about three hundred thousand. It's a different a day and age. It's Hold a different day a second. I don't want to hear about a different they day. They can't. No, no, well, here's, no. well, here's what yeah. they've observed: is that is that doctors kill themselves to make what they think they should make. Right. And so, it, okay. and, and that number is a number that's tossed around a lot. In fact, interestingly. So, as a doctor, are you afraid of this health care stuff that they're talking no, about doing? No, I think it's going to be a good. Thing. Most doctors really, I in know, general medical, in general medicine, I think it's going to. Most be a good doctors thing. I know are very much against it because. Because they say we, we we don't make that much of a living now, and it's going to get worse. And you know what? A lot of guys aren't going to go into medicine because it's That's getting true. shittier and shittier. That's true. You know, and it's already it, it, happening. Yeah, exactly, Robin. And particularly in primary care, it's really bad. When you went really to med, bad. where'd you go to med school? USC. USC. Mm. When you're a young guy who's going to be a doctor. That's the mother load to most girls, right? I mean, you probably got laid like a son of a bitch, didn't you? And don't tell me no. How much? How much pussy? I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> did you get? 
And you're a nice looking guy. He wasn't the sex addict. No, right, I'm not talking about that. All right, by the time. He has elements of it. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, believe me. He has a touch. Yeah, all guys do. <laughs> but, uh, by the time I was 24, I had met my wife. Right. And How many girls did you have before your wife? Oh, I don't feel comfortable talking about it. I really don't. Well, I feel comfortable no, talking about it. No, I don't. My kids listen to your show and stuff. Your kids don't yeah, listen yes, to this. They do. Well, you become yeah. a responsible you would, parent. You would 17. tell them this? <laughs> Not yet, not yet. No. I'll come a couple years from now. I'll, but you I'll were pretty, you were a pretty good magnet for women because you had the. You know, I really enjoyed dating. I really enjoyed. It. I like meeting people and going out and stuff. You must I be did. a super smart guy. What'd you get on your SATs? Uh, I mean, you get into medical school. Well, that what was school college. I went to Amherst. College. USC oh. a- Amherst. No, I went to Amherst College here oh. in Massachusetts. Oh, that's not so good. Amherst? Is that a good school? <laughs> it's a great school. Yeah. How okay. dare you? Go, Lord Joe. What'd you get on your SATs? Uh, I think I was like a. 1450 or something. 1450, like that. that's 15, it? Yeah, back then. That, that would get you in a good school back then. That, and you went to medical school in the 1450? Yeah. It's, it was a different time. No, it wasn't. Yes, it How was. How old are you? I'm 51. Yeah, well, but my roommate in college was six year med, Dr. Lou Weinstein. Yeah, but he I was six he had, year. He had like a, he had a perfect score, yeah. I think, on the math. Yeah. He had yeah, like I'm an 800. Not, yeah, I got like a 750 or something like that. In the oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you fell down in the English. Yeah, I fell down in the English. Yeah. You don't speak so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't read Who well. knew I'd be talking Can't for Can't read so good. <laughs> All right, listen. Obviously, you're a bright guy. So you're telling me the radio show doesn't make you a million bucks a year. The private practice is making you about 150000 a year. Well, that's if I applied myself. Now, now I actually... Actually, lose about fifty thousand dollars a year. Well, of course, you're on the phone all night right. with Andy right. Dick. Do, How much I can do that a lot pay? Of stuff. That's right. Well, my question is: Do people but really I, want to go to a celebrity doctor, a doctor who's on TV? Well, for... um, the, you know, the the people that I treat in my general medical practice, I've been treating for twenty five years, yeah. oh. and in fact, I keep my practice open. That practice open because I am so deeply involved with this group of patients, and I want to keep my employees involved. Uh, when you say you're in a private practice, what is that practice? So you you medicine, help people that general do, medicine. Oh, general medicine. General no, medicine. No, they go to you for my yearly physical, exactly, or whatever. Or so you stick your finger up a guy's. Yes? Mm-hmm. Oh, you that, like that? that? That I do all the time. You're like I got a great. Tr- In fact, I'm due for my yearly physical. Do you want me to just do, we can knock it off right here from yeah. the camera if you want? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Is that weird when you have to stick your finger up a guy's ass? No, no. Yeah, no, you no. know. You're, what are you really feeling for? You're feeling for the prostate. Well, first you got to look at the stool, make sure there's no blood in it. All right, yeah. and then you're feeling for the prostate. And you put a glove on, I think. It. Usually, yeah. right? Usually, yeah. and, but, but the you prostate, it you get, the you feel thousands and thousands of prostates. You get to know what. And what do you, know you do? You put KY on a guy? You, you put in yourself, and then you you push. You got to really, cut, you got to get past the, the knuckle. To if it's it. a good looking guy, you ever dim the lights? Oh, <laughs> I don't dim the lights. <laughs> really? I play a little soft music. So that too. must be weird. Like you do the whole thing. You do a chest X-ray and all this. Yeah, yeah, do You think a chest X-ray? I mean, I was, I was. Uh, I would. I ex, we we overdo X-ray. There's, right? there's actually some data now on CT scans and childhood exposure to CT scans. I was scans. just going to yeah. ask you about the CT. Every yeah. year I go we, to we this do it, doctor. We're very cavalier about yeah. it these days. Every year I go to my guy. Yeah, a chest and X-ray every year is. The, I I would tell you that that there's no great evidence that yields anything. I mean, if you're going to do, do you have smoking history? No, I mean, a uh, hundred years yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, if you, if anything, people argue about whether you should be getting a spiral CT scan of the chest every five years. That that maybe. Right. Uh, but a chest X-ray doesn't yield very much, and you know, I, and I, I was all geared up to be an intensivist. I was heading towards cardiology. That's really where I was oh, going. I see. And I started moonlighting in a psychiatric hospital, and I got so interested in the sort of the more global aspects of the human experience that uh, I just couldn't do it. When you stick your finger up a guy's <laughs> ass, what are you looking for? There, you say the prostate. Uh, prostate. You, what are you? What are you checking for? Prostate cancer? Cancer. Prostatosis. Just yeah. by touching it, you can tell you can if there's feel. some cancer. Oh, yeah, yeah, you oh, can yeah. feel cancer. Oh yeah. yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you have felt you, the, cancer? The, the, the prostate gland is a smooth... Oh, sure. Wow. But it's a smooth, you know, sort of... It feels like a, like a, is, like a rubber ball. Is there of. an epidemic of prostate cancer now? It seems like every guy I know in his 50s is getting... One, it's, it's not epidemic. It's that we're living long enough. 100% of men at the age of 100 have prostate cancer. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, you and know... And a significant percentage at 85 have it. How question, do you prevent that? Do you, is it through the diet? Question, should you? I, I mean, my 85-year-old patients that get prostate cancer... They, there's... Listen, the, the prevailing wisdom is today, you shouldn't even be checking PSAs in guys over 70 because you're not gonna, they're not going to die of prostate cancer. It's not going to kill them. So if you're 50 years old and you're diagnosed with prostate that's cancer, different that's a different situation. Yeah, yeah. Why do guys get it at 50 so much? Is we it our poor diet? Mm, out of shape? Nah, we don't know. And then when they do the operation, it's hard to get a boner, isn't it? Sometimes. Uh, they, sure. they have these microscopic ones now that work pretty well. I, I would take the external beam radiation myself. That's you would right. never get the operation? Mm, I can't say would never. If I were in my 40s and had this, I might do the operation. Yeah. You're saying you would get the radiation because you want to get a good, good thick boner. 
right? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm trying to, to, try to hold on to that. Funny, yeah. that's, what I was, that's what I said, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Robin, is that what I said? No, I mean, really, I don't want to give Your up my exact boner. Words. I really wouldn't want <laughs> no, to. No, that's right. For, for a man, it's a big deal. It's important. What do you do as a doctor? Your guy comes in, patient. You got to give him the, the finger. You know, you do the whole thing. You put the finger up his ass. Yeah. And let's say it smells to high heaven. Yeah. Do you say to the guy, listen, you got to practice better hygiene? Does the guy oh, ever have like a like like duty back there? Oh, lot, all the time. But you're a lot of duty. You want to, you're examining the duty. You're looking it's, at the yeah, duty. Yeah, yeah. You're oh, looking you at look at the duty. You, you check it for blood and stuff. God, that's some job. It's nice, huh? No wonder you want to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I'd want to get out of that, too. Good Lord with the duty. You know, the one thing you, that you, you in medicine is it's, it's a lot of the what same. What does good duty look like? It's not that it looks like you test it for stuff. And oh. it's, it's what, you know. <laughs> There's no job. such thing as good duty. <laughs> you know, here's a guy got almost an 800 on his math and SAT. what's he doing? He's checking guy's duty. I mean, it's not good fun. Times, huh? it's good, good times. times. <laughs> Way to go. Boy, I'd be you know, rushing. It's better not to be so smart. You're not kidding. But the, in, in medicine, it's a lot of repetition. It's a lot of the same thing over and over and over and over Has again. anyone ever moved their bowels on the table oh. while you're putting your finger in their ass? Oh, yeah. It's funny. Well, oh, it's my funny. God. It's <laughs> funny. Oh. I had one poor guy. This is during residency. Who uh, not only did did he, oh God, he, he was uh, impacted, and they oh. and the ER the ER was like, you got to come in here. We put multiple enemas in, and nothing's happening. It was happening. I go, all right, I got to go see what's going on up there. Oh boy! And uh, the whole room got sprayed, entire room. Oh, he oh, exploded. Exploded. oh my God! Good oh. Lord. I'm so sorry. Yeah, in your face everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, you're vague. Awesome. Oh. That, that's you know. who has better duty, Dennis Rodman or Heidi Schweiss? I didn't. I didn't. You do didn't check them. Oh, you didn't do any of that. Okay, all right. Well, that's fair enough. I, I understand that. It's television. So Heidi does actually very well in treatment. She does. On track here. No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me name some of the names of the people who are going to be on Dr. Drew's uh, new season. Uh, oh, by the way, people always are freaked out that I wear a stethoscope when I'm running around there. That, that, that's my primary responsibility is their medical safety. And oh, I thought that was for it. TV. Yeah, no, no, I thought no, you no, just no. wanted us to know you're a doctor. I'm always <laughs> like, hey, look at Dr. Drew trying to be Marcus Welby. <laughs> and, and, and particularly this group is very, Mike Starr, the former bassist from uh, Dallas and Chain. Yeah, let me ask really you some people here. here. Really sick medically. You got Mackenzie Phillips. Yeah. Tom Sizemore. Yeah. What's wrong with Mackenzie Phillips, though? I mean, it's a slew of things, right? She, yeah, but what is she, she addicted uh, to? Yeah, heroin. So at her house, heroin. she had blood all over her nose. We actually cleaned up her house. She, was, she wow. was an active yeah. heroin addict? Until recently. Yeah, she had relapsed badly after her father's death. Remember, she was arrested at LAX? She, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bad, bad, bad. But she, look, Mackenzie understands addiction, understands recovery. She's had long periods of real significant recovery. So she was uh -huh. actually delighted. She actually ends up being sort of abused by the other patients for doing so well. They really? She, Heidi takes off after her because she's sort of the teacher's pet. They start setting her up, and uh, it's really very oh, cruel stuff. Well, very childish. Yeah. Uh, Mackenzie Fellows, Tom Sizemore, he's probably the big star. I mean, he, he's such wacko that but you, he's, he's so probably sick. great he, television. He doesn't get out of bed for two weeks. Is he wow. worse yeah. off than Jeff Conaway? Uh, no. No? No. Why? Wow. Different. Different. Different Are you off. in touch with Jeff Conaway? I am in touch with Jeff Conaway. And he's doing terribly? Mm. He is. Yeesh. And Tom Sizemore... Uh, when you get a guy like that, it's a gold mine because he's whacked out. He has plenty to say. But you say for two weeks he couldn't get out of bed. What does that mean? Depression? No, no. Crash. Speed crash and then open hair withdrawal. So the, he was sick. He so was for really most Ill. of the show, he's in the bed. Yeah. I mean, listen, that's the thing about this group. We have people like McKenzie who are deeply involved in their recovery. We have people like uh, Mindy McCready who claims who to have that? no problem. She's a country music star. Let's see. Tom she, Sizemore. She Heidi claims to have no problem but has a seizure right there. <laughs> One night has this huge seizure and, and then she's resistive. And then you've got guys like uh, T Tom. Tom Sizemore and Mike Starr, who are so sick, they're vomiting everywhere, uh, and falling and beating. Mike Starr, violent. Allison Chase, who is Lisa D'Amato? Lisa D'Amato was a, 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 a cast member of America's Next Top Model. She's super hot? She's Yeah, she's hot. Hotter girl. than Amber? No, different. 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 Young, young, young person. Carrie Ann Panish? Carrie Ann's back in. Did it bother you that she wears her pants so low that her whole yes. ass crack sticks yes. out? Yes, and, and again, one of the things that, you know, edit, the magic of editing is that we were on her constantly. Like, we were like, every time we were like, Carrie Ann, Carrie Ann, change your clothes, change your clothes, you know? Right. Especially in the sex rehab unit, you've got yeah. to, you know, the, the, how they present themselves is important. And Joey Kovar, I don't know who he Joey is. Joey was in Real World, the guy that beat everybody up, beat some walls down and stuff. He what do you do when you get a celebrity who doesn't talk that much? It sucks for TV, though, right? Who doesn't talk yeah, that like much? Yeah, like Nicole Rain didn't talk that much on uh, Celebrity yeah, She did. I, I don't know why. She her, didn't give enough. Her story didn't come in. The guy who was the surfer or whatever, the skateboard yeah, guy. He, he, they, he had a ton of stuff, too. It, yeah, it just they cut didn't it out. Kind of, yeah, they, I don't know why they make those. I, you know, I wish I understood editing better because I, I, that's not my, you know, what do I know that's about That's not post? your thing. All right, listen. Yeah. The, see, the Wait, celebrity uh, well, rehab. I wonder if, you know, is Drew proud of the results he's getting with yes, these shows? Yes, yes. Uh, not, not only... Do I feel like we're changing? You know, I, I've always thought my involvement with media was to change the culture a little bit, mm -hmm. and particularly what you and I were talking about earlier with the the sexual addictions and the sexual. What Drew is abuse. doing specifically, if I may say so, 
is that he he's is entertaining you. He's entertaining <laughs> me. He but but also, what he's doing is he's making it a little bit easier to come forward about your addictions. Right. In other words, you we, think? I do. It I do does, believe that. I hear that other other institutions. We certainly see that at mine, that people kind of... But I meant uh, with the results okay, for your patients. Which is the next topic, yeah. which is usually, you know, if you're doing 20% success, you're really mm -hmm. doing very well with mm -hmm. a group of addicts. And here we have a group that are mostly unmotivated for treatment. They mm -hmm. kind of want to get paid, want to be on TV. And we're ending up with like about half of them really doing very well. And, and really? Uh, nearly all of them, when they finish treatment, start out resistive. They, they actually, when they get the question from the press, don't you feel exploited? They're like, are you kidding? I went in to exploit those guys. I wanted to get paid. I wanted to screw up their treatment process. They ended up engaging in treatment and wanting to be an inspiration to other people. They what a lineup up you got. You got Rodman. Yeah. You, Boy, got, you can work with him. You can work with anybody. You got Rodman. You got, you got Tom. Who's the toughest? Rodman so far out of all the years you've been doing this so far? Uh, no, Jeff was pretty rough. Jeff, Jeff Conaway. Yeah, right. Jeff it, it, sometimes do you want to just kill these guys and just go? No. No. Uh, Probably in moments, but I don't really, I don't walk away with that. I, I, I end up caring very deeply about all that. I was a big, uh, you know, I am a big fan of the show. Uh, this past season, a woman, a lovely woman who worked for Dr. Drew gets fired on I the know. show. because, oh, in, And uh, I felt very rehab. bad for her because I, I, yeah. I would have bashed Carrie Ann over yeah, the head, Yeah, it was too. awful, but you can't touch a patient. You, you just, can't you do it. Can't, that's, it's against that's, the rules. That's a liability that's massive. And right. it wasn't me that fired her. The, the institution automatically did that. No, I get it. And she so. took it pretty well. Before Jeff She was Conway. great, by the way. Selma, she was fantastic. Yeah. She, was, she, we, she was a... I, I, I would stand behind her in any job she ever wanted to do. She is a very talented woman. Bong hit Eric. You're on I got, the... I got to ask one. Before Jeff Conway, did you ever think there was anybody who was untreatable? Sure. Are there untreatable yeah. situations where it feels untreatable? But I got to tell you, Robin, that, that the thing that... that I've learned over the years is there are people that I just think, oh, dead. Uh, he, Bob Forrest, the guy that I work with, yeah. he's one of these guys. I, I signed him up. This guy's dead. I can't be, can't be my life anymore. He's, he's dead. And he shows up 10 years later, Bob Forrest, the wow. sober guy. And, and so you see those things and you, you, you sort of... Would you take Jeff Conway again? Would you take sure. him back? Oh, yeah. sure. You, in other words, you don't get frustrated. You I get frustrated, up. but I don't give up. You and don't I, give and up. I, and I still... They're sick. They uh, need bong help. hit Eric, who is doing a bong right now. I heard it. Yeah, I heard it. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Eric. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Do you want to finish your hit? No, that's... That's okay. I just finished it, actually. Thank you. Um, I just had a couple of questions. Um, in terms of pot, is it physically or, or mentally addictive? And, and is yeah, there the, any the, way that I could... Is pot treatment? addictive? Should the, the, someone go into rehab if they're... Let uh, me just say, there's no such thing as mentally addictive. Things are either addictive or they are not. And when they're addictive, we know there's a biology that's triggered in a part of the brain called the mesolimbic reward system, where your drive systems become altered outside of your... Give me the bottom line. Is pot addictive? Absolutely. Not, I to, don't not to everybody, though. You don't like it, right? I don't like it either. It's, it's, I don't it, like yeah, it. Yeah, it was not addictive to you. Which What's is not addictive? You know what I'm well, saying? No, no, no. Listen, it. pot's not addictive to you. Has it's anyone not. ever come to you because they're addicted to coffee? No, it would, people worry about that because they drink a lot of it. So do I. But do, does anyone come to you because they're addicted to cigarettes? Um, I do work in that a little bit, but uh, you know, I don't treat that as a separate thing. I just work okay. a little bit. Can in it. But you listen, treat me, doctor? I, I can't. Listen, can cannabis treat addiction is one of the most significant things we treat today. It's very common. But it, cannabis strange, you can't doesn't addict everybody. There's Would certain it be people significant that, enough to possibly be on on the TV. Show? <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to get a gig on. Getting, this is he how wants they get to get it. paid too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this this is how they most of them come in, right? And then we uh, go ahead, Nick. You're on in Lake Tahoe. Hey, and by the way, I just want to add one thing. Pot is definitely addictive. I know guys who smoke like 15 joints a day. Yeah. And they even tell me, oh, I quit smoking cigarettes. I go, right. you're smoking pot. Yeah. And they're, com they co they're completely wasted all day. And right. they can they're barely, the get, they can barely right. function and get That's stuff right. done. That's right. Uh, go ahead, Nick. Thanks, Howard. I like to smoke a lot of pot myself. Too. Good times. Yes, uh, Dr. <laughs> Drew, uh, hey, by the way, hang on a second. People want me to be the guy to bums people's high. I I'm right. not that guy. Right. You guys want to get you high? Say, Enjoy. I'm right. Donza. Have a good time. Do whatever you, you have to do. Do whatever you want to do. But if you need help, when this, I can tell you where it's going if you're, if you're doing certain things. And when you're ready for me to help you, I I'm here. Are there really drugs that you get hooked on after one use? They always say if you try heroin once, you'll get hooked. You know what? The, uh, some people get that. Some people get that from speed. Some people get that from pot. Right. Pot, pot's a boom cocaine, now. Yeah. When they get this, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. That's all they can think about. But they told us on. as Something kids, if you try certain drugs once, you're going to be addicted. It's pretty it's, rare. It's, it's rare. rare. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, so I live in, thanks, Howard. I live in California, and so I have a prescription. So it's all Every right. patient I treat now has a cannabis prescription. Right. Every, so 100%. pot is legal. So pot is legal Effectively, in California. Yeah. And what I hate about that is they're using my profession as a way of perpetrating this. Well, and like no Snoop one ever Dogg was here, and he talks about the yeah. tremendous pot he smokes, right. and he says he has a prescription now because he has a migraine. Why not? 
not? That's right. what they want to do. So but pot's exactly. legal in California. Effectively. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It, that well, pot, that my profession it perpetrates this. But why, can't it be, but why can't it be legal everywhere? Well, I told I, I'm you with you, though, Howard. Yeah. I, I just find it odd, though, when you walk down Venice Beach, yeah. there every other store a bong, is, is, a, is a cannabis is a, a store. Yeah. yeah. It, it, well, they're, 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 we're trying to crack down That's right. on it, and then they're not. And By the way, I had an argument with someone the other day, and I happen to agree that there's no way that you don't get sexually attracted to some of your patients. I know you say you don't. Me? And yeah, I'm oh, no, when, you. when you have a sexual response, it tells you something about the interaction. Right. When, you, you're, you're, when you're with a patient, your bodily-based experiences are things that have to be interpreted. You never, ever violate the boundary. I mean, if you have having no, experience No, you wouldn't like have that, sex with Amber, but I bet no. you were attracted to her. When you're having those experiences, they're triggering something in you, and you have to learn to maintain those boundaries, and they're, they may... They Did you have something. a reaction to Carrie Ann? Did you want to <laughs> put her over your knee and spank her? Uh... Yeah, I did, probably did not about putting her my knee back here, but, but right. doing what Selma did, I probably felt like a few times. All right. Uh, All right. That was Rick's question, by the way. Rick, I'm sorry I didn't get to you in Pittsburgh. Uh, okay. Nick, go ahead. Thanks, Howard. Hey, uh, Dr. Drew, um, <clears throat> speaking of Tiger Woods, what do you think of that new sex tape that he came out with? And could you help Ryan O'Neal if he was out of jail, if you had him for, uh, in your... Uh, you, uh, mean, you mean you right mean on Redmond. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, he'd Redmond be good got for the show. And relapsed, didn't he? That's what I heard. Yes, yeah. he he'd be good for the show. Yeah. We got to get him on. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, th- let's address Tiger Woods, sex addict he, for yeah. sure. Ruined his he, life with, because he, he like I mean. You couldn't even possibly physically want that much sex. It's more of a psychological need. Yeah, and you wonder, you know, when he crashed the car, they found Vicodin and, and benzodiazepine, like ambient-type drugs. So you, and he had a knee surgery recently. You wonder if some drugs got really escalated things. You know? He'd be the catch of the century to have on Celebrity Rehab, right? Oh, oh yeah. But I mean, we would I, love but, to get him on But there. what a circus. But I mean, what about the, what do you mean, the what whole circus? attitude where he was, you know, keeping these relationships going with these women Yeah, I know. It's sad. And, I know. It's yeah, just, it was uh, crazy. It's, that's it's, real it's, that's sex the, addiction. That's, well, that's the love addiction part, uh-huh. where you, you get enmeshed with them and you can't let go of them. And stuff. You're right. He didn't only yeah. want sex from these He women. wanted the yeah. relationship. He wanted adoration. Stuff. He wanted them to be faithful. He got upset when the girls weren't faithful to right. him. He's got to have got, them. Yeah, he wants the wife. He wants the girls. He wants them to love him. Yeah. It's, sad. It's sad. It's yeah. sad. That's wrecked right. his life. Wrecked his life. So Vagina did, will wreck your life, guys. <laughs> I try to tell you that. You guys heard about the sex tape now. That, no, I didn't hear about that this. That no. was yesterday that they say there's some sex tape that uh, I think the guy from Vivid Video <laughs> has seen about 15 seconds of, and they're trying Ugh. to verify whether it's uh, Tiger Woods or not. Well, what I mean, okay, guess what? The guy's having sex with these women. Uh, next. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's move on. Oh, yeah. You don't like this. You want to move on. No, no, I mean, what, what sex tape, whatever. You know, who cares? See, who cares? You don't yeah, want to see, you don't wanna see Tiger, Tiger Woods' action. penis? No, I don't want to. <laughs> As a doctor, you've seen tons of penis. Tons of penis. Uh, you've had it with penis. Had it with penis. Yeah. Do you ever see a guy who walks in with an unusually large penis? Is it crazy? I mean, do you, what's the largest you've ever seen in your practice? I mean, have you ever seen like 12 inches? No, I don't. I don't nothing ever stood out, so to speak. <laughs> when you see a guy, be honest with me. I'm because trying this to. is my worst fear. When I go to my doctor every year, he has to examine my penis yeah, and yeah. balls. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I know I'm small. And I'm embarrassed. You you make a value judgment. I mean, you no, say, "Good no. Lord, look no, at this." No, I mean, no, no, you know, no. when you see a guy with almost but no you, dick, you got you. <laughs> what do you say to yourself? Be honest. You I want to know sorry. the truth. Wait, it's it's Stop like being uh, a dishonest. N- no, I'm not. I'm I'm, I'm I'm really diligently trying to be super honest right. with you. A- and when you're with it, but you're you're caring about that person. You Stop I mean? it. No, you're yeah, also I mean, a man. You're also a human being. No, right. You have to look at the pe- like. I would go. Even oh my god, had- this guy has like no penis. Are you always what Howard is saying? This whole well-rounded guy, or do you ever become just a guy? Like, do you ever sort of you, giggle but, afterwards but when the uh, you know and say, "Oh my goodness, that guy's got no dick." <laughs> You know, like, I, I could when, hardly get yeah. through that when exam. When we were residents, we used to do, <laughs> so we would blow off steam like that. Right. Uh, uh, but not as, uh, when as you were in medical while, school and there were cadavers, yeah. would you look at the penis and go, look at this guy, he's got no penis? I don't remember doing that. We dissected the penis and everything right. else. So. Oh. Are blacks always substantially larger? Oh, stop it. I, I'm <laughs> being serious. Robin, well, why not? We this is a guy who sees, are blacks always substantially larger? Is the myth true? N- always no. Do you have any black patients? Sure. Not many. Uh, How many do you have? I can enumerate them. I got a few, yeah. About two? No, no, no. Uh, well, sorry. It, it where depends. are you, Beverly? Where? where, where, where? I'm Pasadena. Pasadena. There's yeah. no black people there, is there? Of course there are. There are? <laughs> yes, yeah, a big African American. Fully black people living in Pasadena. Yes, yes, huge African American. I don't, I don't believe it. <laughs> I'd like to know how many black patients you have. I, I don't... I don't enumerate them, but I do... I, and, and several and, are coming to mind. And, and, and now, in your mind, most of the male patients are well-endowed who are black? Mm. 
I, it's hard for me to remember that. I don't. It's, I'm That's not making insane. note of that. I, I would make that would be the first thing I'd make a note of. No, no. of course I would. Well, I you'd mean, be a different kind of doctor. I, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I, it's not that. Yeah. First of all, don't you when you look at a guy and he's naked, don't you say, "Hmm, he's bigger than me. He's smaller than no, me." No, I, I uh, honestly, Howard, you're, it's almost confusing to me to, to. That's why I can't call up any memories of it because wow. it doesn't, doesn't. I don't. I think this is you being the radio but, doctor. But, but I've been I think doctor, off to you, you'd say, "Listen, no, no, but no, no." These but black listen, guys got a cock the size of a. I, I've been a doctor a, a long. I've been a doctor twenty years. You right. know what I mean, and so maybe when I was a resident or something, it would. If you'd asked me then, at that, that really stage of my career, maybe. But if I, you see an unusually small micro phallus, yeah, uh, you're going to say, "You oh, make my, note." You go, "Huh?" Yeah, but yeah. whoa. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I haven't come across that lately. So right. Maybe that's why I'm not remembering anything. Nothing has sort of struck me. All right. Would you look at my penis now and tell me mm-hmm. if I'm normal? If you like me to, Howard, whatever you need. <laughs> no I don't chance. have a license in this state, so I it could see. go down a little differently. <laughs> <laughs> it might, might be in All right. One last question for Dr. Drew. There's a big season coming up. What I love about it is these new uh, episodes come right after another. In other words, usually with a TV show, you have to wait a couple of months before a new one comes on. Uh-huh. They just finished Celebrity Sex Rehab, and yeah. now and I'm right, now in. right into I think I like this I, franchise. I two, two quick things. I think the v, I think the first episode is actually up on VH1.com. I think oh, you actually yeah? see the first episode. Also, I, a really quick thing. I, I'm working with some guys that invented this, what's something called an RX locker. It's a way of oh. locking your medicines up. Yeah, Gary's the, buying into this. Yeah, Did you hear about this? It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a device that you can lock, at least make the statement to your kids who are abusing prescription drugs like crazy because they're free in the medicine cabinet. It's a little locker. You put your meds in. It has a lock on it. So at least Says, Drew hey, invented is- a thing called RX Locker. Uh huh. So in your medicine cabinet, when you have kids, you can lock you got up these, the good stuff. They look like little garbage pails with yeah. big locks on them. Yeah, yeah. And Gary goes. I'm putting this in my, in my uh, well, house. Dr. Jesus gave me R.S. Is, is Gary here? He said his... Yeah. He and I go, Gary, I said, what is with you? I said, yeah, what, what are you up to you, over there? Yeah, really. He, he has some experiences. Know. He'll have to tell he you. He says, I have a few Oxycontin in my house. I don't want the kids to get a hold of them. See? See? Yeah. That's that's it. It. That's Product that's works. Go to drdrew.com for that. One there, last there question. There he is. Here he is. I, I, I don't know. You're, you're always... You're, you're monitoring your kids. Can you tell the story you told me? Hey, I said, listen, my brother said that, you know, in the 60s, listen, my mom had her issues and stuff. He said the best he got LSD no matter what the best shit he got was out of my mother's medicine chest <laughs> right so, and then, said, now we have stuff that's but 10 your mother had like 50 bottles yeah. no, but listen we got no, stuff but, that's but so bad now yeah. that the kids are using it how, how do kids get hooked on heroin what's a, what's a way that a if a kid wants to get into drugs though they're gonna get it they're no no like, I got you but why make it yeah. so I'm, my kids don't, don't even do anything wrong but I'm saying why you know how we were when we were kids why so make, you're gonna do the RX locker in the uh, in yeah because I want my Oxycontin for when I need it alright you don't want to compete with your kids for Oxycontin no but it's just it's like why why leave it out I thought it was a great idea have a bunch of other medicine too that's not even bad but I just yeah, throw it all in it, 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 Does it, it lock a with a key? Yeah, it's, it's like a, lock, with a combination. Yeah, a combination. Lock. A combination. It's, it's, it's yeah. simple. It, I would it just steal the whole thing. thing. Yeah. Right. Just I don't break it up. The truth is, it looks like you could break the whole thing up with a hammer. <laughs> but, 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 but you probably could. But that's a, it's it, you're saying. But it lets you know. Yeah, yeah. But but you know people get up. People get hooked on kids get hooked on heroin now by stealing their parents' oxycotton. They get they get on opiates now. They prefer. Gary used to like like have a secret password where he could watch what his kids were watching on the computer. Hold on. I monitored my kids on oh, the yeah. internet. Dr. Uh, Drew, yeah. is that crazy? Yeah. No, you got to do that. Exactly. You have, you have, but he wouldn't tell the kids. No. It, it, why? It's, it's not the, you have to tell it, your you kids you're spying on them. You don't have them. to tell them. No, you don't have to tell them anything. Really? Why? I don't know. Well, I if think they're it's adults, wrong. it's wrong, but when they're kids... My mother was spying on me all the time. I couldn't you take know, it. You know, I always thought it was wrong to read the diary and stuff diary like that. Diary is then. a different thing. Really? Diary, yeah, you, you need, they need to have a place that they sure. you know, can express themselves confidentially. Right. I, I agree with that. All right, Rob, of, you're on the air with Dr. Drew. Come on, let's yes. get one last question right. before we well, run out of time. Question. How cool. you now? Hey, now. Hey, Dr. Drew, real quick. Uh, you're checking this dude's prostate. Do you ever make any of them come? Is it possible when you have you made a guy come? No, from, uh, I, I've not. But that's a great question. I had a, a, in medical school, a friend of mine had that happen to her when she was uh, prepping a guy for a uh, catheter. And he, he blew a load? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did she still go ahead and, <laughs> and put the catheter in? Was she super the hot? You, gotta do the, mm. you, mean, wow. you mean she's like, when you say prep a guy for a catheter. Like using like the iodine swab and stuff. Right. So she has to handle the penis yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I guess yeah. manipulate it to yeah. some degree. Yeah. And he got hard and he came. Yeah. <laughs> if that happened to you, if that happened to you, would you charge a guy extra? No, no. I would. Does that make it easier or harder oh, to put the catheter in? <laughs> guy starts moaning. It'd be really creepy. Well, Dr. Drew, you are delightful. Thank you, I love what you're doing on television. Thank you, thank I'm your you. biggest fan. I appreciate it. And that. I don't say that in any kind of sarcastic way. I mean it. I appreciate it. These thank shows are fantastic. I, I hope they, they change our culture. I, I really don't even do. care if they change the culture. I, I, but I, I just I, enjoy I know watching like, and, these. And that's, but I'll tell you, that's part of fighting that fight. Is you you got to be entertaining or people don't watch. You give me you know? Dennis Rodman. 
Tom Sizemore, Heidi Fleiss. I uh, have Carrie to say, Ambrug. that lineup will make me tune in. Yep, Mackenzie Phillips. And, and you know one of the, the interesting things? You, you're yeah. right, Robin. And, and what's going to be interesting about this is everyone's going to come with all kinds of pre-existing ideas about who these people are. Mm-hmm. And l- you're going to fall in love with these guys. They're, How they're is it that group. the celebrities never have sex with one another? Or do they? And you guys No, they that. don't. I mean, you know, we had that one thing with Daniel Baldwin where it started going that way. Because we're right. on it. We're on top of them. It's, it's a Daniel seemed to be somewhat attractive to Mary Carey, yeah, yeah. the porn star. Mm. How's she doing? Is she? Uh, she's okay. I, yeah. I communicate with her a bit. She's, right. she's, you know, she she has periods where she really gets sober and gets with it, and then she fades out. And she's doing better, I think, overall. All right. Uh, see, Doctor Drew, on this season, uh, we are very excited about Celebrity Rehab Three, one of my top five shows. Thank you. And Doctor Drew's RX Lockers, which Gary's in the middle of uh, locking up his oxycontin <laughs> from the kids. Uh, it's available at rxlocker.com and drdrew.com. Doctor Drew, Thank it is you. always good seeing you. How are- uh, Artie not here today, but I know he sends his regards. Please, thank you. All right. Please, and please tell him I send my best wish. I really have come to have a deep affection for old Artie. Yes, yeah. as we all do. And uh, we will uh, also remind people that Dr. Drew was the first one to uncover Robin's unusually large narcissism <laughs> score. <laughs> Man. We, were, we were just healing. We were, we we were just healing. healing. We were nowhere near healing. Robin's we nowhere near just healing. healing. <laughs> I'm not healed. To get yeah. here. And we're Dr. Drew wrote healing. an excellent <laughs> book profiling Robin's <laughs> extreme narcissism. Yeah, he's been very good to me, I'll tell you <laughs> yes, that. Uh, that I'm not on one of these shows now with his, his treatment of me is, well, is a testament to my abilities to stay clean and sober. I hate to disagree with you, but I happen to think he did you some good. I think he knocked you down a few levels. I think you're like a 32 now. Uh, I think, I think he you. may have increased her score. <laughs> <laughs> and so watch uh, Celebrity I Rehab 3. I still say yeah. that uh, this was a setup. All right, listen, Dr. Drew, yes, you've sir. said enough. Yes. You're going to go on a big promotional tour. Where else are you going? Uh, Today Show. Today Show? Going there, yeah. Oh, that's a Try big not deal. to mention me and my score. I, will, I promise I won't. <laughs> Who's doing the big interview? I actually, I did one before I got here. They wanted to talk about Casey Johnson. Oh. And they, they could please uh. come in. I, I did Love Line until 3 in the morning. Yeah. You know, and then I came in there, and I'm going to go do Celebrity Rehab. After Wouldn't this. you think growing up rich would be the greatest thing in the world? It turns out maybe it's not so great. These kids all wig out, these rich kids. One thing I can tell you, one thing I noticed working at Psychiatric Hospital all these years, is that the very rich and the very poor have more in common with one another than the rest of us. Yeah, I'd rather be very rich, though. Yeah, yeah all things being equal, it's sure, better. Why not? But but they end up from the standpoint of the health care they get, the mental health issues they get, much more alike than what happens to the rest of us. Yeah, yeah. she would have been good on celebrity rehab, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, we lost. Evidently, her. all right. Thanks, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, yes, how'd it go today? Uh, I went good. I mean, you know, I've, it's it's one less adversary with RD not in the studio. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, Howard is always so kind to me, and I am very appreciative early on. Now you come you come on to talk about your show and um, some serious matters, and then is it hard to keep things serious with Howard? You know, I I always know no matter what Howard's going to go somewhere uncomfortable. No matter what, he's going to ask me an uncomfortable question. So I've sort of learned to be prepared for that, and he is a genius at doing it, to, to put, take you to a place. And, and, and because I try to be fastidiously honest, I, 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 I either am either going to answer honestly or I'm not going to answer. And he let me off the hook a couple times, I thank God. So I, I appreciate that, too. He seemed uh, interested with your practice and giving guys like prostate exams. Well, that's all stuff I can talk about because we're not talking about specific people. But he wanted to know about my own personal you know, life and my youth, my sex life and stuff. I was like, hmm. It's a little weird to talk about. It. <laughs> but you had a good time today, though, right? I did, I, and, I, and I really do appreciate. I enjoy. I enjoy talking with them. They, uh, you know, I've been doing radio for so long that when you're in there with somebody, this, this is going to sound silly, but when you're in somebody who really knows how to do radio, it is such a pleasure. It is just such a pleasure. It makes things easier, right? It's just. It's almost like if you're a musician and you're in an orchestra with other people that really know what they're doing. It's just a real pleasure. Now, at the end, um, Gary was saying that he monitors his kids' uh, activity on the Internet and he's going to be locking up his meds. Yep, and Howard God. didn't seem to agree with him too much on that. How do yeah, you feel about it, that? It, but that was all Howard's issues left over from his childhood. That's different when you're a parent. Your parents just do the job. That's it. Just do what you got to do. So yeah, the, yeah. You're talking about young adolescent kids, too. We're not talking about 20-year-olds. Different. So Gary's doing the right thing. Gary's doing the right thing. Amazingly.
I was listening to the wrap-up show yesterday, and the wrap-up show, of course, deals with whatever we deal with in depth, and J.D. was on there, J.D. describing his relationship status and, you know, the fact that he had given his phone number to the recept- the beautiful receptionist yes. out there. And they were asking him, but did you hear any of this? No. No, oh, it's great. I love when J.D.'s put on the spot and he has to explain himself, explain... Is he his- very eloquent and yes. uh, <laughs> to the point? Yeah. I heard this in my car and I said, I got to pull tape of this so that you can hear it. Because, you know, I know a lot of people are busy at that time of day and they might not hear the wrap-up show. And they might have missed the eloquence right. of J.D. All right, let's see. I'll give you three clips, okay? Won't, won't spend too much time on this, but it is funny hearing J.D. try to explain his feelings about women and what he's up to. You've been accused by the guy sitting to my right, but also others, that you aim way too high mm-hmm. when you're trying to land these women. What, what, how do you answer that? Um, I've been told that before. I was told that in high school, actually. <laughs> but, uh, by who? By a girl that I liked. Um, she said you're she, aiming no, no, way no. too high? Well, no, no, no. She said... And then she turned her wheelchair around and left. No, no, no. She, she said you go for girls that you can't get, whether that means they're too... Hi, but you did know. she mean including but, her? Well, but, but yeah, because she had a boyfriend. But um, did anybody ever give you an indication of what that level of girl that you should be having is? Exactly. Like, it, it, yeah, it, you could you could date that girl. Oh, well, I'm I'm like, listen, I can only I'm attracted to who I'm attracted to. I'm sorry if you know I can't. I'm not attracted to everyone or something. I I've been. I don't think. I don't think I aim too high. I just like who I like. I'm sorry, right, but everybody you like is is really is really high up. No, which is they're fine. not I mean, really we, high up. We all yeah. we all are like that in our minds. But then at some point you have to, you know, like I got a mirror. You know what I'm saying? And I sort of know where I've dated girls who are too good for me. I've dated girls that I might have been a tiny bit better looking than. But for the most part, I try to stay within a range. Is Gary out of his mind? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Since when don't you know that? What are you specifically referring to? Above himself with right. Mary. Yeah. Kind of putting Mary down. All right. Well, is he saying he and Mary are sort of on the same level looks wise? I don't know. <laughs> Could be he's saying that. Wow. Yeah. And and I saw a lot of the other girls he dated. He always dated uh, way up there. Right. That was after I started working on the show. Okay. Well, say whatever you will. Should have seen me before. But just remember. <laughs> Whatever happened to the girl that used to come over, you would watch movies? What happened to her? Uh, she got a boyfriend. <laughs> how did these girls get a boyfriend? Was she just what? While the, how did the girls get a boyfriend while they're seeing? Oh, listen to JD, I'll explain. <laughs> Dragging you along? It's all right, you know. It's, uh, what, but what, what happened? Like, were you, you guys, supposed to become that? Right. right no, like, why didn't you become the boyfriend? Because I'm not necessarily looking for something totally serious because I, I don't... Uh, you know, I'm just, I can barely handle my myself, let alone having to, you know, be a part of a sort of relationship and dealing with someone else. And Do you think you'll ever be ready for a relationship? Uh, yeah, sometime. when Because, you know, I don't know what's going to happen after this year, and I don't know what, it's just very, I, I'm just not in that. Mode. So, where... so you think she was open to a commitment if you had been? I just love hearing JD try to describe what's going on internally with him and his thoughts. I really wonder because that wasn't a hard sentence to get out. I'm no. not ready for a relationship right now. It takes some time, but he can make it last 15 minutes. You know, as a guy who's been shot down by lots of girls, I uh, have to tell you, the worst feeling in the world is not being shot down by a 10. It's being shot down by a five. So right. you might as well go for a ten, right? Yeah. In a way, I, I kind of relate to J.D. I understand what he's saying. He goes, well, if I'm going to be shot down, let me go for the best. Yeah, but then you, you increase but, your chances of getting shot down. I, no, I thought about it yesterday. Like, something? Ralph called in about it. I'm going, like, you know, Ralph had a, a valid point. Like, aim for the stars, and you might get it, blah, blah, blah. But it's like if you only make $10,000 a year and you go out for real estate and you're looking at $5 million beach homes, you got to be realistic. You're never going to get a house, right? You're never going to get a house. So, okay, what's in my price range? Here's J.D. You know, continuing, like, continuing on about his thing with women. All right. What's your boyfriend commitments? Like why? Like you seem to be taking the shoulder responsibility like a, a father or a husband might. I just, I, 
I just, I, I, I don't know. I'm just not ready. <laughs> I'm just not like looking for something. So you don't want to be in a girlfriend boyfriend relationship right now? Not necessarily. No. I mean, if if it comes along, sure. But you know, in my mind, like I have. <laughs> I don't know. It, it sounds stupid, but like I Kidding. have a wandering eye, I guess you could say. <laughs> but you have great, you have beautiful hands. Huh? No, well, I'm just saying, like, I don't but know. you're like the mother on one day at a time. You can't commit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Forget it. Never mind. I put it in the wrong way. And you mean like Marty mind. Feldman? <laughs> I hate. I hate this show. I hate talking on these shows. Done. What do you What do you mean by a wandering eye? <laughs> Uh, I like a lot of girls, so I can't, you know, I don't know if I could, fo- I don't know how, <laughs> forget it. Forget it. You, you don't feel so like you, you don't feel like you can commit because you think you'd still be looking even yes. if you would. Yes. Thank I'm you a player. You're welcome. <laughs> I'd like to be a player, but it's not working out so well. <laughs> anyway, um, I thought, you know, Ralph called in. I thought he had good advice for you know, the whole crew there. He was saying, listen, J.D.'s attracted to who he's attracted to, and he's going to keep tra- – well, what should he do, go after girls he's not attracted to? I mean, a lot of the guys were saying he should set his sights a lot lower. But why – you know, you got to go after who you're attracted to. That's the way it works. So what you're saying is that J.D. could lower his standards yeah. and get late. Sure. Sure, you could. there's got to be some. But you know what JD's going to experience if he, if he does lower his standards? You lower your standards, and then they still don't want you. And that's the <laughs> worst thing of all. But you don't I think told you, I went to the shittiest um, <laughs> parties when I was in high school. JD, I'm telling you, that's the worst. You're in a way, you're right, pal. I'll tell you that. You ever been rejected by like a three? I have. Uh, well, not necessarily a three. We we were out at a show uh, in Florida or something somewhere, RD show. Right. And you know there, were, you know there were a couple girls that were interested, and I was the one I was interested interested in was cuter and and stuff. She had a friend with her who was a little cute in the face, but like a little chubby or whatever. Right. How chubby? Uh, chubby enough. Yeah. Um, I mean, not like. Yeah, but with the thick legs and the cankles and the... I don't know about that, you know. but just, but just mm. you know... Just not right for J.D. Right. She was like a young Hillary Clinton. She no, just not, over his weight limit. Like, you might right. call her fat, but she's wasn't necessarily I mean, fat, fat, but But, like, maybe 15 pounds overweight. Yeah, yeah. maybe a little more, a little but, but you like big butts and stuff. Mm. Well, they, not like yeah, that, I know. though. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. so, but she had a good face, like no acne. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so we ended up going back to this girl's apartment... And um, the the cute girl was off somewhere, and I was, like, a little drunk. <laughs> right. And I was just like, I, you know what? <laughs> you might as well go for it. Yeah, well, the, ch- the, the, the thick girl was sitting on the couch, like, reading a magazine, and I, <laughs> I sat up next to her. <laughs> I just went over and sat on the couch next to her, and I didn't know what that was like. We were just talking about the magazine or whatever, and, and she didn't really seem to be interested, and I ended up, like, passing did, did out. Did you try to kiss her? No, I didn't really try anything. Oh. She, there was no chemistry. Like, she didn't it, want it. I, it didn't seem that way. Yeah. So uh, I used yeah. to go to. Um... So what you're saying is a girl you didn't even really want. She didn't want you. Well, I mean, it, not necessarily that I didn't really want, but you know, I tried to, I guess, lower standards or whatever. I don't and know. And that I, didn't even work out. <laughs> and then you feel worse. Nothing works out. Yeah. <laughs> I used to go to AZA parties. You know, this, this is where ugly Jewish women go to party. <laughs> like the good-looking Jewish women wouldn't join a, a like a B'nai B'rith Jewish uh, girls society. This was the it. UJW. <laughs> yeah, well, no, this was it's called AZA, which somehow is the B'nai B'rith women, but it's like the little girls. Yeah, not but you little said girls, it's ugly high Jewish school girls. women. <laughs> yeah, so I'm calling it the UJ, yeah. <laughs> UJW. And, and like good-looking Jewish women didn't join AZA. Right. They didn't have to. But this was like a dumping ground for every ugly Jewish girl. And my buddy said to me, I'm telling you, man, it's a slam dunk. You go to these, he says, I go to these parties, I get laid all the time. This guy's not even Jewish. <laughs> and he goes, I just tell them I'm Jewish because they all want Jewish boyfriends. Meanwhile, they're 15, 16 years old and they, they, they want they Jewish, have boyfriend. A Jewish yeah. boyfriend. Yeah, you, trust me, you're not getting married at 16. <laughs> you know? And most of these women were built like a female Shrek. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So I go there. Oh, I show up with a bunch of my pals. I guess I was 17. We had just gotten our licenses and stuff. So we were able to drive to this 
horrible party. I remember it was, it was like in Syosset. We go down to a girl's basement. And it's like bad wooden paneling. Like, you know, she's showing off her finished basement. Meanwhile, it's a shit wood. Pa- it's not even wood. It's a fucking crap you buy at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> With a crappy couch and some chips, cheese doodles, this kind of thing. Hey, that was a finished basement at that time. Yeah. And I had my cigarettes so I could look cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Imagine this poor girl's parents hosting this party and then creep like me walks in and I'm smoking down there. <laughs> I mean, my God. Must be a uh, nightmare. Some big douchebag down there smoking. <laughs> you know, I flipped my lid if my daughters had a party when they were 17 and there was some asshole down there smoking. Right. But, you know, I had to have my cigarettes. And all my friends, man, they were working these ugly Jewish girls. I mean, every one of them was, was paired up. Yeah. Yeah, every one of them but me. I'm standing there with a cigarette. And I'm like, I'm like, I can't believe these chicks are so fat. And none of them want me. <laughs> like, they should be all over me. This like, is a disaster. I should be like a rock star. Did you try to talk to any of them? Or were you just I talked to one of them. I think it was the girl whose house it was. And she was sitting there alone on the couch. Nobody was looking. She was hey new <laughs> to the 10th power. And I go over and I'm Why like. Why don't you stop? He's painting this picture. I'm sure the girls weren't that bad. Uh, that, that, that cartoon I wrote, you know, Howard yeah. Stern, the high school years? Yeah. That I wrote with Jeremiah. We uh, we have this scene in there where I'm at the party and I talk to this girl and, and she didn't really want to talk to me. She, she she would rather sit alone than talk with me. <laughs> and I really don't know how to. I didn't you know I just didn't know what to do and I just went back and I kept smoking and then I left. Like I I, I just I went I walked outside. I was so embarrassed that not even ugly chicks didn't want me. I mean it was dismal. Yeah. In a way, you know, I admire you for setting your sights high, but. Well, it's not necessarily you know. setting my sights high. I'm just, you know, yeah. whatever. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. I, you know, I can, I, I... If you could nail this receptionist out here, I don't think... I, oh, my God. I think he would hard? be able to get off all the medication and everything. Yeah. It would solve she would, all his problems. If she would agree to be your girlfriend, I think you'd be fine. <laughs> agree? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to agree. Oh, you don't she even is, care if she agrees. Not just only be is, your girlfriend. Not only is she beautiful, but she's like one of the nicest... People. I know. They I, used to have a real vomit out there for a receptionist <laughs> who never would even say hello to me. This goes every day. Hi, hi, Howard. How are you? I know she makes a special She's point of saying hi and goodbye. She's and a lovely girl. Very she nice knows smile. knows everyone. Yeah. So, What's her story? Where'd she grow up that she's so proper? And so nice and sweet. I don't know. I haven't had many conversations with her. It's, more, it's a lot call. of passing. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I guarantee you she's a nice girl. Why don't you stop by and have a conversation? Because he knows he's not going to Well, it's there. also, you know, she's busy answering phones. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say stay there for an hour. Oh, wow. honestly, <laughs> honestly, I don't blame you. I, I, she, she would intimidate me, too. I would hey, go Howard? over there. Oh. I actually yeah. stopped off and spoke to the girl for a little bit yesterday. You know, uh-huh. was joking about the card and whatnot. And I said, by the way, you know, because I'm actually trying to help Monica. Maybe you're, I know maybe you're taken, but do you have any friends that might be appropriate for JD? She goes, uh, uh, maybe we could put out a, a, a suggestion box or, or a, oh. a box that you could drop names in. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. He ain't that bad. He's not. Uh, JD, you're a wonderful guy. You're not a so bad I, human I, being. You're actually pretty good looking. Right. You're, you're, you're a charmer. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Any mother would be proud. <laughs> yeah. I love when you go, what, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what, though. You seem happy since they put you on medication. <laughs> oh, you smile like a retard. <laughs> yeah. You smile like a mongoloid. <laughs> no, you seem much, no, you seem much happier. Well, I mean, I'm I'm actually here, you know, I've only been here for a couple hours, so it's not like I haven't been here overnight. <laughs> right. So it's a lot, you know, I've gotten some sleep and stuff. I haven't had time to sink yet. Are you on, Are the... you on new hours? Yes. And you like it better? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's getting used to, it's, you know, the, the train ride is fine. Um, what are your new hours? Uh, I'm trying to go to bed, I've tried to go to bed at 8, but it hasn't really happened, and so I'm like, you know, 9, 10 o'clock, and then I wake up at... Uh, three, and uh, and get on train about four. No, oh. I didn't listen to a thing he said. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what he said. I'm trying to get, and, get, and then uh, get on a train. Four. Was he and, counting? And, and, I heard a lot of numbers. Four. I heard three, four, nine. <laughs> I heard I had three, four, nine. I don't Twenty-two, know sixty-four. Hike. <laughs> Are you getting sleep? Uh, yeah, getting some sleep. Yeah. 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 All right. Good. I'm doing okay. Yeah, I worry about you. <laughs> don't stop. Then he's what? on. Then what? he's on the wrap-up show. Uh, and he goes, I uh. You know, 
I can't be in a relationship. Who knows what's going to happen at the end of the year? And, <laughs> but, and I'm like, I was like, you know, I worry about this guy all the time. Like, well, if I do retire, <sighs> but that see, I don't I, want you to. know. And, and some people have even pinned his whole nervous breakdown on me because they said, they well, it's year long anxiety. He's JD going just turned thirty, which is you know he's no spring chicken anymore. <laughs> he used to be young JD, and now uh, he's thirty. And uh, if I leave, what, what's going to happen? No, no. It, it had nothing to do. With, I have actually, I sort of had this problem before, like, with the ner- you know, the stomach and, and the nerves and whatever. Yeah. But I sort of, li- I just sort of, I don't know how I dealt with it the first time, uh, but this past time it was just, I, I what really freaked me out was coming uh, the train ride to work and having a, a weird fear attack or whatever. A fear attack. That, Let me t- anxiety attack. Let yeah. me tell you something. Yes. Taking that subway, any normal human being would have. Yeah, there's a panic nothing attack. wrong with you. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> no, I know. That's normal. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, with my head, that just stuff like that. Because yeah. I, I don't think I was even li- living in New York at the first sort of time I dealt with this. Right. So, but uh, I, you know, I'm. So these I'm, things come and go with you. I get. I, I guess. I, you had a messed up childhood. Well, <laughs> did we up? all? Yeah, did no. He, but he really had a hard one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he don't know him. I kind of know. I kind of heard some things. I heard some things. Whatever. Yeah. You had it tough. I didn't have it that tough. Yeah, you know, it was. It wasn't. I'm I, not going to get into your personal. Shit, I had nothing but. to do with my parents. I, I oh. wasn't. You know, nothing has anything to do with no. your parents no. ever. Well, I just I wasn't popular in school and stuff, and you know, whatever. That's hmm. that's about as uh, you know. Okay. It's a little heavier than that. Oh. <laughs> the way I see it. <laughs> I'm sure you see it mm-hmm. differently. I don't know. Dude, it's got to be a major trauma. Your mom, you know, found that guy on the internet uh, and ran off. Well, he was that. older then. Yeah, yeah, I was like in the, I, you I know, don't care. I, I was in high and school. And that's not even what I'm referring to. I was towards the end of high school and stuff. Mm. So, uh, you know. I just like bringing that up. <laughs> I, I know you do. <laughs> and, and don't it's worry, my mom just loves it. My mom loves being talked about on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I get to hear it every time. What about what King Tonga? Does he like? <laughs> what did she say? Uh, she's just you know. She goes. I had a little. Haymeyer family have this no. speech thing. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, JD, What I does your stepfather think it. of his celebrity? Uh, he he, he loves it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he really even cares. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, where's your mom living now? Hawaii still? Uh, no. no, she lives in in the states. Okay, somewhere he doesn't know. I'm probably. She's I probably. She's where she lives. <laughs> She's on the mainland. She's on the mainland. All right. Well, Did you spend the holidays with her? I. <laughs> that was a whole different. I'm not. I can't even get into that. I didn't. But see, I told you, you had a rough childhood. Yeah. You can't even get into. It. Did you? You asked a simple question. It's so question. complicated. But yeah. it, it, it had. JD's well, situation is so complicated. No, it's not complicated. It's just I don't like my mom. Doesn't like being talked about on the air, and that I don't. What like, happened on the holidays that you didn't see your mom? Well, I. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna open up a whole mm. fucking can of work. Go ahead, what the hell? Ugh. But I, I mean, my mom knows I love her and stuff. Right, sure. But rather, I went to, uh, I had to pay, you know, my dad was like, usually. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you would think a college graduate would get this story wow. out. Full sale. It was the whole thing. So, you know, my dad has paid for my trips to Ohio in the past. Like, right. you know, for the past few years. If he hadn't paid, I wouldn't have gone anywhere. Okay. And, you know, and my mom was always telling me you can always come to Hawaii and this and that. And, you know, neither of us really had the money to make those trips. So now she lives here in the States. Um, and this year I had to pay for my trip to Ohio since my dad was out of work. Uh, well, I, <clears throat> I had to pay for a trip somewhere. Right. Uh, and I chose Ohio because that's where more relatives live and m- more older relatives that might not be around for much longer live. Okay. And my <laughs> my mom wasn't um you know, she just she felt sort of, you know, like I I, I think she felt, you know, I loved my dad more or something and that's why I was seeing him and so she she had a bit of an issue with that, but we we've talked and sort of I Wait a I, second. Ohio's where your dad is? Yes. Oh, so because you went for the holidays to your dad instead of her. Yeah. Yeah, but what is with you listen, let no, me ask you something. No, no, I gotta no, bring please, this up. Please don't let, say let me just anything. say one thing. <laughs> just stop. Why can't your mom come visit you if she wants to see you? Like what is this all about no, no, you having she, a trap? Uh, hold on, hold on. I know. Yeah, go ahead. She's she's talked about that. She's talked plan- about talk? it. She's talked all the time. 
time. No, she, just get on a fucking plane and come see you. Well, listen, no, the no one can make all that much money. <laughs> you know, they got no, no, wait a second. things to all do. She years. got to Hawaii. No, but yeah. that's, How'd she get to Hawaii? She had no I, problem with that. I don't know. I, you I do don't know. know. She picked up and she <sighs> just got there. I shouldn't have just said anything. <laughs> listen, your mom picked up and moved to Hawaii. No, I know. Now she's back. The whole time she was in Hawaii, she didn't get on a plane and come see you. Okay, maybe she didn't have the money. I get it. Now she's here. Now she's going to come down on you that you... She could get on a plane and visit. She could get in a car and visit you. I, it's the things you have her a beautiful d- apartment. Hold, hold she can on. stay in. <laughs> no, 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 I don't want anyone to see that apartment. Welcome to my lair. <laughs> uh, um, no, she, you know, with her job and stuff, she didn't have as many days off and whatnot. Well, and whatever. These are called excuses. How many years didn't she see you? It's not that she didn't see me. Well, we, she didn't. How many years didn't she see you? It was a few years ah, so. that we didn't see each other. So you could you could understand that, that maybe you're not going to just hop on a plane and rush right. out. All, there. all of a sudden she comes back oh. and you're supposed to immediately go have Christmas with her? But that's not it at all. Get it's, her on the phone right now. No, no, no she doesn't. <laughs> all right. no. But she, is, uh, she but. is planning on a trip to New York. She said she wants, I think she might be coming springtime. and um, But she will not be on the show, so sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> If you want to meet her, I'll be, you know, I'll bring her up one day after the show. No, I'm not interested after the show. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know, I'm only interested on the oh, show. Oh, I know you are. Right. So, I, I don't, she doesn't, will, you know. will your mom stay in your apartment? No, I no. I have no, there's really no. She'll be on the couch. <laughs> no, there's not much of a couch. I don't know, if my mom ran off to Hawaii and didn't visit me for years, oh. I wouldn't be so quick. To yell because he's not visiting you. Yeah, I would yeah. just kind of. Mellow out up. there. Yeah, suck, suck it, it up. up. It, no. what, 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 what about this is wrong? No, just, it's my mother, I, my mother loves me. I love my mother. My mother's fine. What are you, hypnotized? No, I'm not hypnotized. I'm just trying. <laughs> She's repeating this like a mantra. <laughs> she, she, gets, she gets, you know. I love she, my mother. My mother loves me. She I love did, my mother. She my doesn't mother listen me. to the show. And right. whenever well, she then re- what are you worried about? Well, yeah, then let's because, talk. Because <laughs> she reads out. the stuff on, like, you know, the website and whatnot. <laughs> the website. Well, why and, is she reading it? Well, because. Nobody just, report this on the website. That's funny. She won't listen to the show, but she reads about it. Oh, yeah. Does your mother love you? <laughs> yes, my do mother. You love your do you, mother. Yeah, do you love her? Yes, you do. All right, I just wanted to know. I love my mother. And, and everyone that writes uh, write-ups on websites post that. <laughs> right. And my mother is fine. She was a good mother. Is a yeah. good mother. The big headline on the website today should be: JD's mom loves him, and he loves her. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Put that on there. Uh, All right. Well, God. <laughs> so how many how many hours of discussion did this take? It, w- it was a uh, phone conversation, and then uh, was she crying like you don't love me? No, it w- she didn't cry, but it, it was it was cl- it was Rami, something like that. I do love you. You love me. Yeah, I love it you. was something like that. Oh, come on, mommy. Come on. <laughs> you know, she, do you she, ever get angry and go, you know, honey, you went to Hawaii for a couple I try, of years? No, I because that doesn't anger me. It's it's uh, I'm trying to. She had she's had these thoughts, and it's not. How I can't it believe is. she wants to actually spend so much. Th- you know, she wants to spend time with you. It, but she really doesn't, because otherwise... She had what thought? She does. She does. She wants no. to see me. That, she even said her New Year's resolution is to see me and my brother more. And that's another thing. Like, you know, me, I live in one state. My brother lives in another. So it's a whole, you know, mm. thing of trying to see us both. So it doesn't what seem th- all that what difficult. What thoughts did she have? What kind of thoughts? That, that I, you know, um, that she was... Like I would, I was telling my talking to my dad more and seeing him more and stuff, and like yeah, because like your dad's around. No, 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 that's not. But that, it's not. <laughs> well, what do you mean? She felt more out of the loop, and I, I she told, took herself out of right. the loop. No, but that's no, she has. Oh. She was out of the loop because she moved away. God, I hate that's how, That's she, what happens she with you. She moved away from the loop. No, she didn't. She's in <laughs> the Mommy, loop. you were told, busy painting coconuts. <laughs> oh, no. I told her. She wants to see you now because you're famous. No. No, shut up. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not even that famous. You're very famous. I'm not that famous. How many famous. friends you got on Facebook? I don't know about Facebook. I don't add everyone on Facebook. But How many uh, friends do you have on Facebook? Facebook, I don't know, like eight, 700. This I don't guy's know. got 700 friends. There Places. you go. Now I everyone got, wants to know him. Well, I got like a, a, I got like 12,000 or something on MySpace, but no mm. one uses that anymore. Look at that. <laughs> Mom probably heard about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm very popular. I know Dane Cook. I have a million people following me. Wow. It's weird, JD. Uh, JD friends everyone. Not on Facebook. Do you ever reject anyone? On Facebook, yeah. Really? 
Well, people I don't like know and stuff. You know 700 people? Well, it's mainly like uh, people I know, hot chicks, and uh, like possible network opportunities, you know. I see. Benji, uh, oh, I think only French chicks. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm still doing it. Seems like there's a lot of girls on there. It's, it's too confusing. A few people add everyone on Facebook here. Mm. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, right. anyway, listen, man, it sounds great. It sounds like you're on a roll. <laughs> Whatever role that is, I don't know. Right. All right. Okay. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, good Young He's JD. a good dancer, girls. Yeah. How's that zit doing, by the uh, way? <laughs> he almost made it out. <laughs> Thing's huge. I think it went down, though, actually. It's gone down. Yeah, good. It's even got its own name, thanks to Will Murray. Will What's Murray, its name? Will Murray gave it the name Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that receptionist see that's it. <laughs> I, well, for, yeah, I try and, you know, curl up the lip a little bit. All right, cool. It's going away. Thank you. <laughs> Mom was going to come to New York, but then she heard about the zit and she turned around. <laughs> it's funny, though. Like, JD's mom wants to see him, and which, but... I don't. I don't know. He gets mad when I talk about I it. Know, so I, I know. I won't say anything. Trying to get to the bottom of it is very, very painful for him. Right. All right. Let's go to Jim. Jim, you're on the air. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hey Hi. now. Um, how much pussy is JD leaving on the table with this no sex kind of attitude he's got? I don't think a lot. I, I don't know what the deal is with him, and I well, don't know. I think of him like Richard Christie. When Richard Christie first got here, what did he do? He stayed in his house and know. had dates with himself. Remember, yeah. he—they were legendary. He would talk about the girls, and he had—he only wanted these porn star type girls. Right. And then no, one day, he finally figured out that's a fantasy, and I've got to be with real girls. And he hmm. found the girl he's going to marry, and right. he's very happy now. I can't believe that girl's going to marry him. Uh, look, he, you know what? He sometimes knows some things. He was showing me pictures yesterday of where he went for Christmas. They rented this little cabin in a scenic area mm. on a lake, and it looked lovely. I don't know. I smell disaster. Well, of course it's going to be a disaster. Right. It's Richard. Yeah. But, you know, right now it's a fantasy. It's she another was guy so I worry excited about. showing off her ring at the party, <laughs> yeah. and I had to say I was happy for her. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's just that he, there's another guy. Like, what happens if I leave the radio? What's Richard going to do? Go back to music. Isn't he? Music. <laughs> that music wasn't getting him anywhere. That he's living music in a, had him wearing it. He's living in a storage yeah. locker. He's like in his 40s now. I don't think that's going to happen. You know, <laughs> just well, how, weird. Don't you have to take advantage of your celebrity status to get as much, you know, as many girls as you can when you can. Yeah, like if I was JD, the way I'd play it, like what he was doing with Artie for a while was like he'd go to these shows and like hang backstage and some of these girls were kind of interested in it. And he had an interesting job. His job was to videotape the backstage area. So that's a license to talk to everybody who's back there. JD's a little too particular about who he's going to have sex with. I mean... I mean, uh, Ralph made the point you can only go with who you're attracted to, but I, JD, I, JD really should bang some homelier girls. Oh, I, the, I, I like any type of girl, but listen, <laughs> the, the backstage situation at an Artie show isn't exactly... Uh, it's, a, it's, it's more I, of a sausage fest. A sausage fest, we, and, and the girls that are there are, already are with a guy. So oh, it's right. a whole, okay. you know, yeah. you, you can't, and unless you're Artie... You know, Artie might be able to... Pull. You know, I got to tell you something, though. Like, Benji... I, no offense, Benji, but Benji's kind of gross. And, I mean, he's getting laid like crazy. I mean, exactly. yeah, but maybe you should really take some... I'm, I'm hang with him a yeah, little bit. Yeah, go and get some Benji <laughs> lessons. <laughs> I mean, that, that'd be some too. Some. I mean, quite frankly, if I was a girl, you know, I'm trying to imagine what, what a girl sees in a guy. I think I'm all over you before Benji. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Benji, you know, Benji had that hot chick at the party. and He was you, making out with her. If yeah. Benji stands next to JD, JD will slow him down. <laughs> well, look, you're, you're a woman. You couldn't, you're the only one in the room who can answer this. Right. If you had to bang one of these two maniacs, which one would you do? <laughs> Put him I mean, in a suit. I mean, seriously, if you have really had to have sex with one of them, who are you going to I definitely with? bang JD before oh, I bang right, right. right. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Ah, oh, look at that look. <laughs> I mean, so I'm saying. Hey, Robin. You didn't know this, Benji? <laughs> no, I, first of all, I think JD's a great looking. Have you seen his eyes? Who, whose face is better, mine or JD's? 
<laughs> JD, I just right. I did what Fred did. I cleaned you both up and put right. you in suits. Because that's did, what you have to I do. I did the best for you I could. All right. Yeah. Well, I came in second. <laughs> <laughs> you came in second. <laughs> I, I'd be weird. Hey, I, I feel weird hanging out with Benji. I'm always afraid of Benji just doing something weird. <laughs> like, I bet you wish you could get that girl Benji was with. Were I you, know still you do. sitting there watching that and going, um, what the hell? Would you like to get into bed with her? Would I like to get into bed with her? Sure. Yeah. Could I be able to like hang out with her like he does and whatever? I don't know. No, she seems true. a little out of, you know. I love Benji, I love you, and I don't know. She's a nice girl. Uh, she she's I'm sure she is. And but you know. Wow. It's hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, he's he's full on, so I but mean, I'll he, tell you what. He's they dated Ivy Supersonic. Right. And there's no way I could deal with I, her <laughs> at all. Right. He's he has a, a, a some sort of threshold or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I know what. But you see, but Benji, like with Ivy Supersonic, Ivy Supersonic has a beautiful body, and mm-hmm. he just he, he did her. That's the way you got to be. I, I guess. Yeah, but what but yeah. JD is saying, he also puts up with. You know, he was on the Ivy program. Right. He's going to court with her. You know, <laughs> and Benji, gonna... Benji really works it. He commits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he's, <laughs> He likes her too. <laughs> yeah, She's a nice girl. <laughs> I wouldn't well, keep fucking keep someone for a long, more than a couple weeks. How, how long you been with that new girlfriend of yours, the blonde? We've I don't been, know her name. We, we were dating off and on since uh, October. What month is October? Off and on, though. Okay. So, uh, so you don't know for three months and you've been having sex with her for about three months? Yeah. Yeah. And she must be great in bed. I mean, I picture her being wild. Well, she's, she's probably phenomenal. a trampoline. Yeah. Well, I'm very, yeah, she is, but also whenever <laughs> I'm really attracted to a girl, she's great in bed. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it doesn't. It doesn't take much. Yeah, I think right. it's more the guy has to be. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. This is the longest conversation I've ever had with Benji. I'm going to turn off his mic. Well, that's because it's mostly a JD conversation. <laughs> right. I don't think JD's ever had great sex. If he's had great sex, I think he'd be more enthusiastic to try to go get it. The, yeah. Well, I mean, I've been with girls. Uh, How many girls you figure you've been with? Um, probably maybe like uh, I would say ten at the 10? most. Really? Ten, really? At the most? At the most? Well, well, how, uh, what's the realistic think... number there? Never mind. At the most? Well, I I don't know. Like five? I'm, I'm just trying to uh, <laughs> like six or seven. I don't. Well, know. You were a virgin until when? Uh, 2000 and what was our last year at K Rock? 2005. Four, five. December you got laid the last year we were at K Rock. Yes, the last yeah. the last day of the show. Yeah, was it that chick off the internet, the porn star? <laughs> so, well, she wasn't a Kirstie porn star. Fur. No, it wasn't Kirstie Kirstie Fur. Fur. No, didn't bang her. All right. Um, no, it was the the girl that came in with the Bunny Ranch people, but she wasn't with the Bunny Ranch. Are you still on the internet um, jerking off to those, um, you know, the girls you pay? Uh, every now and then, yes. Yeah. yeah. Bigasses.com. Where do you go? What's the website? <laughs> There's lots of websites. Which, what's your favorite? Uh, I don't, I, I don't, like I'm not getting site. into this again. Why? <laughs> because I don't want to. Tell us a site you don't use anymore that you used to like. Uh, a site I don't use anymore? iFriends. There's a website called iFriends. Yeah. You have to pay to get on there? Yeah. Um, and, and then, what do the girls like? Uh, give you a private session, or do you have to like be in with a group of dudes? Yeah, it's pri- You can do private shows or whatever. Did you get a private show? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, of course. But yeah. uh, it's weird though. Like, like, what do you tell them to do after? Oh, a while? we heard him. He tells the girls to give the try to make the dog lick them. No, <laughs> I know they don't allow you... that on those sites. <laughs> they don't. How come that one site where you got the girl? There to wasn't lick? a st- forget it. Don't worry about it. I'm not even talking about that anymore. <laughs> Thanks, come, Robin. So someone, someone around here, and I'm not going to give up any names, told me, because oh. I keep tabs on you, okay. that you constantly look up high price escorts. <laughs> really? I do. Yeah. I, you know what? It's it's some fascination. Like, I don't, I, it's not even high price. It's more, um, I, I don't know. And I have yet to get the balls enough to do it, and I probably Good. won't. But it's just like, I'm just seeing what's out there, and it's uh, surprising. I don't know. <laughs> What do you think those pictures are real? Well, I, there's sites where you can see uh, the actual girls. Well, I, I don't necessarily want to like give. What is the site you're on? No, there's not, the sites. It's uh, it's not sites, but it's just like you like you know some porn stars do stuff uh, like that. No, um, so and, you can you know, get them. Yeah, be your girlfriend. For yeah, like yeah, yeah, you can see. How, but uh, of course, yeah. you know anyone good enough is <laughs> way out of my price range. Right. How much do they charge? 
Uh, a decent one's like a thousand an hour. Wow, an hour. Yeah. Good lord. Yeah. I heard you were uh, oh, scouring the uh, <laughs> Tracy's office for porno movies yesterday. That's the other report I got. Oh, I the, uh, there, there was glom, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, what do you want there, from me? He was in there searching like it was like a like like, like the there was gold. Oh, no, yeah. I was... <laughs> like you know when those guys have a pan and they panhandle for gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you talking about me? Yeah. Ask Sal. Sal did I, like I take like a, a few. Sal just takes everything and just shoves it in his office. <laughs> <laughs> that's gold. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't get paid a lot. That's how he makes his you know that's how he makes his money. Well, makes I think it up he in porn. gives him for Christmas gifts too. But yeah. there's still a lot there. I'm sure, you sure are. <laughs> But uh, yeah, whatever. What do you want from me? I you don't still know. talk to Kimberly Kane? Uh, here and there, not so much. She's got a boyfriend oh, out yeah. in California. Yeah. So. You pretty. banged her though, right? Uh, d- d- yeah. Wow, yeah. that's pretty. She's good. one of the ten. She's hot. Uh, yeah, I just, and very nice. Yeah. So. But all of a sudden, he had his ten under his belt. Well, it's, I, it's, it's probably less than ten. I'm probably over. Believe me, it's less than ten. <laughs> <laughs> Might be it, less than five. It, like it's been so long and so far, you know, in between. It's yeah. I don't. I lost. When I it finally know. happens, do you get like, hey, now I got some, and I'll probably get a lot more. Coming up, but then it just goes dry. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you scream like that last guy we heard? Mm. No, nah, I haven't really screamed like that guy yet. Do you make noise when you come? Mm. You must. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, I don't know about that. Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've spent way too much time on this, and I, I have know. to take a break. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then I'll get to the phone calls. All right, uh, Jim, thanks. Thank you, man. Bye. All right. Uh, J.D., thanks. Thank Good you. luck with you and your mom and your dad and all that. You. Sounds like a lot's going on. Let there. us know when you see her. Yeah. Let us know when you see your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's such an ordeal for them all to see each other. I mean, now she's moved back to the States, and right. I still don't think he's seen her. No. And then she's upset because yeah. he doesn't come see her. You're seeing your father Like, you'd more. think the first thing she did when she got here was fly to wherever J.D. is. <laughs> all right, look, let's get off J.D. Yeah, that was just what I would do if I was his mom. Right. Benji. Yeah, what's Were up? you surprised that Robin would bang J.D. over you? No, no, I mean, that's fine. I mean, everyone has their, has their particulars and everything. I think my face, head on, face, not from the side, but head on, is uh, I have a more attractive face than JD. But overall, I am overweight, so maybe, you know, or, and also maybe she likes his personality better. So someone that has the luck, luck with the ladies, do you have any advice for uh, JD? Well, I, I think he's a great guy, and he's he's maybe a little shy, and um, I think uh, you know I think uh, he should he should uh, try to meet women he likes. He seems to be doing that, and, and no. Do you think he's aiming too high? No, 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 no. I don't think at all. I think I think he's a good guy. He has, a, especially now that he's getting to be uh, he's thirty. First of all, even if you don't think he's good looking, which I think he's a, he's, he's a handsome, normal looking guy, but even if you didn't think that, the, the exact looks are less important to girls when they get over 25. If you're a nice guy, if you have a good personality, if you have a job, I think that tends to be much more important. So don't be as shy. Huh? Especially the over 80 year old woman, the, the senior seniors, they really don't, they're really open to like personality and everything. No, don't, I know it's okay to be shy too. I, I think the only reason he should go for women that he's not attracted to is if he wants to, if he is shy about going on dates and he just wants experience dating and he's shy about going out with uh, uh, more attractive girls, if he's real shy about talking to them, he maybe he can learn to talk to girls he's less, uh, what's the word for it? Uh, less, but like sometimes when you're real attracted to someone, you get more nervous. And so maybe with an ugly girl, he'd be less nervous. So maybe to build his confidence, he could do that, you know? Okay, whose face is better head on? <laughs> I think, listen, I think overall he has the body. But, like, it, I think I have a better face head on. He has great teeth. He does have nice teeth. And you said he has great hands. Beautiful. Yeah. Wait, let's see those hands. <laughs> they are nice. All right. But head on. Like, even, and even you can do my thing where you go like this. 
<laughs> to maximize your looks. What? Like this. <laughs> I don't. I didn't like that shit. The guys were giving me like, "Oh, you're shooting too high." I think you're a great guy. You should shoot for what you're into. But I said, if there is a reason, is if you feel shy about talking to hot girls, maybe you'd get experience from talking to girls that you're not nervous with. But I don't even know if that's your problem. I don't think you feel you have a problem talking to girls. I'm nervous talking to people I don't know. Period. Oh, <laughs> uh, so the 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 they they're, they're, uh, they're, are you more comfortable talking to an ugly girl than a hot girl? Yes. I just don't have comfortableness talking with people I don't know. Okay, you know, so that's cool. At all. So maybe you should. I would think, which I'm actually pretty shy too. I think, but like maybe. <laughs> yeah, but you're do shy. you want? You know, I am. But do you want to? Do you want to be less shy? Is that something you want to change about yourself? Um, I don't know. It's. I, 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 I worried about a lot of other things before that. Okay. Well, I think that's. I think if you wanted to overcome that, you just. You could you would you put yourself in experiences to try to talk to more people. I mean, if I was worried about it, I'd probably work on it. Okay, but I, yeah, I'm, yeah, people are asking me like, what's your? But I think you're a good guy. I think he's fine. He has a great, great. He's a nice, happy, sweet, sweet guy. Are you happy? Uh, yeah, I guess. Not, not right now. <laughs> why? Uh, why do you have such a hard time talking about your mom? Because she doesn't like being talked about on the air, and you know when she reads some of the stuff like Howard says or whatever, she takes it like literally, and you know, like what, like how he was saying if if she's so concerned, like she can come out to you. Yeah, she takes, you know, she doesn't. It's a whole thing, and you obviously don't feel that way. Well, no, I like I know it's, you know, it's half kidding or whatever, or at least I hope, but uh, you know, what it's just. She takes things literal, and you know, she's just whatever. I don't know. Just trying to protect your mom. Yes, trying to make everyone happy. <laughs> so it's tough to do sometimes, you know. And then we also got a little bit, uh, a little info about your sex life. <laughs> Ten girls, man. A little info. That, I mean, there's not much info anyway, so it's all little. Ten girls. That was a shocker. Well, ten. I doubt it's ten. I'm sure I'm. Like I said, it's who knows anymore. I don't know. Between like five and ten? For the, probably five and ten, yes. Were you surprised that Robin would pick you over Benji? Um, I, I, I don't know. I love Benji. Do you think I'm sure, you know. Do you think you're better looking than Benji? I don't know. I don't think I'm, I don't have a great self image of myself, so. I, uh, no. I guess that didn't help too much either? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I have to go. Good, man. I'm here to talk about my book today, see? You got a lot of How many things. times I've been coming up here, and how time, every time I come up here, I got something new to set. Something new every yeah, time. Yeah, took me the entrepreneur of the decade, man. You know what I'm saying? You got like a DVD, too, don't you? Got a DVD, got a book, got some chicks, man. Whatever you want, whatever you want to buy. Not just you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what else are you going to be talking about today? I uh, mainly we're going to be talking about the book, The Making Him a Stand-Up Guy, you know, and uh, what we've been doing lately, you know, uh, and whatever Howard wants to talk about, it. I'm sure Howard is going to uh, bring up something. He always does, right? He does. <laughs> so All right, man. See. Have fun there today. Charlie Murphy's here. He just wrote a book. Uh, Charlie, he comes on our show all the time. Just lost his wife. Yay! This is a downer day. I'll tell you that. Anyway, Who booked this show? <laughs> I don't know, but the book—the book's actually pretty interesting. I learned a few things about Charlie from his new book. 
There he is. There's Charlie Murphy. He's had a uh, hey, life, man. hasn't he? Oh, Charlie's had a life. He's living uh, like a second life now. He's got. He's got. He's got a life for sure. Or well, maybe a third. Right. Yeah. I didn't. I, Look at him in mink. I didn't realize you were a five percenter. I was five percenter, bro. Man, in Roosevelt, where I lived, and Charlie grew up there too. You always hey, used you to let talk everybody about. know I'm, I'm wearing mink. Uh, yeah, you are wearing I, mink. I'm only wearing it because it's cold outside. Yeah, but don't well, you? Why else would you? <laughs> That ain't why at most people be having their minks on. It be hot. They they walking outside, burning up. I want everybody to know I got a mink. Don't. But but how much does a coat like that cost? Uh, I actually forgot because that's how long I had it. Well, it was, <laughs> everybody always says they if they're wearing fur, they had it for a long time. <laughs> I've had mine. Yeah, I had mine for but like you ten know, years. But you know the whole yeah. social stigma of wearing a mink. Are you afraid? That people doesn't are, apply to black people. It doesn't apply to black people. Yeah, yeah, black yeah. people do wear mink. They don't seem to That's care. Right. That Nobody they... throws paint on it and none of that because they know what's going to happen. So, are yeah. you, Do you think that people who throw paint on minks only do that to white people? In other words, they know they could probably get away with it with white people. You, they do you, get away with it. Yeah, you see a I black mean, guy, I ain't throwing paint nobody's on Nobody's ever thrown paint at a, a black person. I never. I've never read no. that. And what's your rap on that whole thing with the uh, fur and the mink? Like, how do you justify that? I don't justify you it. Don't. I, just, I wear my coat. My thing is this, man. You know, I didn't go out and trap the animal or anything. I went to the store. I seen the coat. It looked nice. And, uh, and I bought it. Yeah, but, but you are supporting the people who trap the animal, right? Yep. And I'm also supporting Frank Perdue, who kills the chickens that I fry up every Thursday. Right. In other words, you don't see a distinction. If you're gonna no, eat... I don't. I don't. Right. I don't. Actually, you know, to me, an animal is uh, he's an animal. Right. And man has dominion over animals, right? So, right. you know, that's... You know. So we should kill them and wear them. Uh, <laughs> do whatever you want with them. Eat them. Yeah. Whatever you want with them. I mean, you know. Would you ever wear a chicken? No. <laughs> I wouldn't wear a chicken, but I wear leather coats and leather shoes like most people do. Yeah. You know? Hey, first of all, yeah. before I go anywhere with this, and this is depressing, man, and I have to say, offer my condolences. I, I oh, read, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I heard you. I was in the back end. Nah. Well, yeah, that was happening last time I came on the show. Yeah, she you got told really me. mad at me because I even discussed it on the show because she felt that uh, she wanted to keep it private. Right. You know, but. She was, was an amazing late. woman because she was still. Very amazing woman. Yeah. You know, she uh, uh, actually, when, uh, uh, when it was time to make arrangements, I was informed that they were already made. Wow. And that, that tripped me out. I, 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 don't, I couldn't see myself doing that. You're you know? saying, in other words, at some point, without you knowing it, your wife made all her funeral arrangements? All of that. Everything. Wow. That's yeah. very loving, isn't it? Because she didn't want you to have to be burdened with that. Yeah, because, I mean, even without that, it's still tremendous burden. Right. Yeah. Of course. And, and the fact that she handled it said, I don't want my husband dealing with that. He's going to have enough to deal with. How many kids you got? Uh, altogether, four. Four? How many with her? Two. Two. How old are they? Uh, three and ten. So, what, man, you got to be flipping out. I mean, what are you going to uh, do? I'm not actually flipping out. I'm, been, I'm doing pretty good. I got my, uh, I got a good support system. I got my moms and my, and, oh, my, uh, bro, my sister-in-laws and stuff helping me. Right. So, you know, yeah, uh, it's been uh, not easy, but it's not been undoable, you know? You're on the road a lot because you do stand-up comedy. Uh-huh. And, by the way, one of the things I learned about you, you had never tried stand-up comedy till you were 42 years old when you got on the Chappelle show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got to be nuts because you know when you first go out, you kind of suck. I yeah, mean, you're not, but, you're not but, what you are My now. whole thing was, it was, it was, the objective was not to, uh, to, 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 to uh, be good. It was, the objective was just to do it, to break the glass, to go do it and uh, see what it felt like. So you didn't set your sights high. You just said, let no, me No, I didn't. Man. As a matter of fact, I wasn't even uh, trying to make people laugh. It was like, just go up there and see if you can be in front of an audience and... Uh, and not totally choke and piss your pants. Yeah, and, and express yourself and then... Get off the stage before anybody fires around at you. <laughs> so when you first got up on the stage, how long? How long? How, how long was your set, so to speak? Okay, was it the Laugh Factory? I was supposed to do seven minutes, but I got up there and you know I started having fun. I stayed up for fifteen minutes. Yeah. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. And first you, time. Did you prepare for it, or you no, just went no. up? No, the only the only preparation was, uh, I'm not going to let anyone. Uh, Embarrass me. That, that that was in my brain. I'm not, I'll do anything to stop another person tonight from embarrassing me. What do you mean? If somebody anything, heckles, it, it, oh yeah, I would. You would have beat the shit out of him. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not <laughs> that, cool. That's I not mean, cool. And you know, comedians got to learn. When I first to... started doing comedy, that became right. my my way of handling the heckler. Right. You like, beat him up? No, I would tell him like this is what's getting ready to happen. If you say one more word, now look at my eyes and understand it. I'm not. 
I don't have nothing to lose, man. I'm going to come over there, and it's going to be real bad. Man. You know what's funny about it's that? Be real Robert De Niro. There's a guy I know. His name is Ron Zimmerman. He, became, he ended up becoming a comedy writer and a film writer and all this stuff. He wrote for TV shows. But he started out as a stand-up comic. And when I first saw him play Garvin's in uh, Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. He got into a fist fight with the audience. <laughs> right. He got up there and he st he had a real dark uh, kind of act. He mm -hmm. he would talk about uh, you know his that his he would say my father raped me in my ass when I was this and that you know he, it was crazy it, he, it was true it just he just was not. and then someone in the audience got up and got offended <laughs> he started beating the shit out of each other it was the it was so great. <laughs> yeah. That I, 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 had to have, I had him on my show. I never even had a comedian on before. I said, this is the greatest stand-up. And I found that he left the business because he said he'd have to drink to do his show and right. everything because it was so friggin' crazy. He was interacting right, right. with the audience and fighting with them. Yeah, and, and that, that doesn't last long. You know, the, the moment you... Uh the moment you beat somebody up... The, first of all, the club only has you there to fill this club up so people buy... Alcohol and food. That, that's that's right. what the club is making their money off of. That's right. So if, the, if, the, if you fill a room up and then you empty the room out. <laughs> it ain't good for business. He didn't make any money. He said, yo, you know what? Uh, I, I don't think we want you here no more. So but, fighting is not really what you want to be doing. But when you're 42 years old and the additional pressure of being Eddie Murphy's brother, right, arguably right. one of the greatest stand-ups around, right. that's even more pressure because everyone's right. expecting you to go up there and be a polished comedian. Exactly. You know, and especially I mean, coming off the Chappelle show and like, oh, the Rick James sketch was so funny. Now this guy does a stand up. It must be on the same level. Right. And of course, all those expectations were there. And uh, when I look back on it and I look back on what I, the material I was using back then and all that, I go, you, you really have to believe in God. It was a miracle. It was a miracle. Yeah. It is a miracle. But now, I mean, uh, you've been doing stand-up now for a while, so it's going yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's been, uh, this is going into the ninth year, and the entire time, it, uh, it, you know, we've been on the road. It's not like, you know, you see somebody, say, well, how long have you been doing stand-up? The guy, well, I've been doing it for nine years, and he does it, you know, uh, uh, when he gets booked uh, once a month or whatever, because uh, it's a hobby to him. He's not living. I've been living off this, so I've been doing it constantly. Which you know? strikes me as unbelievable because here your wife was suffering from cancer. For how mm. many years was she? Two years. Two, two years. years. Two, yeah, two years. Two and years. your career is kind of blossoming and things are happening, and now is right. the opportune time for you to be on the road, to be going out there and doing these clubs. Well, you know, I'm, I can still do it. I just had to uh, reconfigure, you know, my home base. That's all. You know, I have a, a, a living nanny now. Right, you know, and I have, you know, I'm I'm going to be moving out to the West Coast after the school semester is over, like in June or whatever, July. But yeah, we're going, we're good to go. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It's got to be unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Yeah, because now you know, you're the the father of a three year old. That's a. I was the father of a three year old before. No, to that. yeah, but you're alone <laughs> as yeah. the yeah. father of a three year old. That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. That's a tough. That, but you know what though, I look at it like this. I believe in God, so it's like whatever he. He wouldn't have gave me this, this uh, situation if he didn't think I could handle mm -hmm. it. So, Your wife was a young woman. 40. What kind of cancer did she have? Uh, cervical cancer. Cervical yeah. cancer. And this is, you know, like she got it a year after giving birth to a child. So, Well, that's, that's a common thing. Yeah? With women, and yeah, uh, yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. No kidding. Women, uh, cervical cancer is a very uh, common form of cancer in women. And uh, it occurs a lot of times, you know, uh, not too far after having a baby. Does wow. it have a low cure rate? Is it, it's yes. some, it is. Yeah, yeah. So she knew. She said this is it. Yeah, she knew up. that when, when they first uh, diagnosed her. She knew that. Wow. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. when you hear words that you don't want to hear, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about her, I'm talking about me. Hmm. You don't really want to you don't words you don't want to hear, you glaze over. She told me everything that was going to happen the, the, for, immediately when she first was diagnosed. So this is what's going to happen, blah, 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 blah. But the parts I didn't want to hear... I didn't hear. I was like, that's that's not going to happen. In other words, I think you know? what you're saying is you don't even want to believe it. So no, you don't want to believe it until it's, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, in you sort way. of take it yeah. and say, oh, but they'll have a cure. Something will happen. Something will happen. And, and, and she's and not yeah. that sick. You know, like all you kinda, of that, yeah, all all that, that stuff. Man, all of that. Man. You know? So this nanny you got. Uh, you, her name's you, Sharon. Yeah, she's uh, working out pretty good so far. Yeah. So far, so good. Kids like her. And then what happens when you go on the road? Is it weird for you? Because, I mean, it's now... It's weird for me right now, yeah, you know, because uh, as good as the person is and everything, you're still you're right. getting used to knowing them. I know. And you have to do it real fast, you know. So what we've done is just modify my schedule where I'm not... You're not gonna, gone for I'm very long. Gone, I'm not gone very long or as often, you mm -hmm. know, because 
the reason behind the activity before was uh, the urgency of getting to be up to snuff where it's like, okay, you really got this. And if you step away from it, from it for a minute, you can get come back and you know exactly what you did. The whole pattern it was completed. And what I mean in that was, uh, you know, we went all the way to the point of shooting our one-hour special and getting it booked. It's booked on us, uh, Comedy Central in February. It's going to come on right. February 15th. Is that you got, you got your own special? Yeah, I got a one-hour special that comes on February 15th. Stand-up. Uh, Stand-up. No kidding. Okay, yeah. So And, and also we did Live at Gotham. So I was like, okay, that's the chapter. Okay, it's documented. You know what you did to create that chapter, and you can, you can create another one now, and another one, and another one, and another one. So I got all the footwork in, and I had to get in, you know, to continuously do this for as long as I want. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, man. That just kind of blows. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. But you know, um, the bright side of it, Howard, and, and, and I tell my kids this is, you know, their mother was in, in, in uh, a lot of pain. She went through a mm. lot of suffering. And if there's any bright side of it, it, that is the bright side, is that she's no longer suffering. Now, what about Dayton for you? You're a young man. You certainly are going to have needs. Oh, of course, man. You know, that's... You're that's, going to have you know, physical needs. That, but I'm not in a rush to... Uh, You're not one really, of these guys. I haven't really been, you know... You, you, now, now that the question becomes, uh, who, who's good enough to bring around your kids? That's right. right. Well, you, know? you, don't, well, have you don't have to bring everybody home. Yeah. You can go to a club <laughs> and meet a few girls. And you know, I'm just saying, you know... <laughs> yeah, but, at what point will you start dating? This is something a guy's got to figure out. Who knows? This is a fresh I mean, wound. I mean, your wife died not even a month ago, I don't think, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's December 13th. And the nanny, no interest there. Is she one of these hot nannies? Yes, no. no. no I you made sure that there wouldn't be I any of that. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a prelude to a problem, you know? Was, you know. Absolutely. you got to separate you got that somebody out. living in your house and all that. And if you don't want to marry them, the last thing you want to do is sleep with them. No, you know what? And they it's, live in your house. It's a lot more important that they take care of the kids. Yeah, right. that's way more important. Yeah, you can get they laid start somewhere. Getting segued into some other, you know, no, no, no. You know, a lot of women are going to be after you. You got money now. You got a career. You got a Comedy Central thing. You got the. And book. I also have a memory of the New York Post and the Daily News headlines. <laughs> so All I'm right. pretty safe. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to play it smart. Next up, well, every week they got somebody going down the tubes because of that, man. You know, so you just got to be careful, man. All right, listen, there's a couple of things I got to talk to you about that are in your new book. Number one, and this is just very, this is minutia, but nevertheless interesting. Tonight. Okay. Uh, Charlie farted in front of Michelle Pfeiffer the first time he met her. Okay, yeah, you know what? <laughs> That's not I knew you have a clear up. memory of <laughs> yeah. that, huh? I knew you bring that up. Yeah, that well, what people are misinterpreting is that I didn't fart in front of Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm not an animal. You know, <laughs> I went to a secret location. Right. And Where I, was this? At a it party was on a movie time? set. Oh. You were on a movie set. It was on a movie set, set of Into the Night. Mm -hmm. that with Dan Aykroyd, my yeah. brother, and, 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 and they were all in this movie. Anyway, so... Did you go to visit him on the set? Were you working with, I was him, with him I was working with him. Okay. And we was in the trailer, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? Uh, I feel a big one coming, but... <laughs> <laughs> She's a tremendously can't beautiful woman. Some, yeah, man. Yeah, and a lady. And it just yeah. ruined it for me, man. You know what I'm right. saying? So I went and got off the trailer and went way to the back of the lot behind three trailers, man. No one was supposed to be over there. No one. All right. No one. It was, it, was, it was silence. It was me. And the next thing you know, I'm sitting there going, wow, that was, I'm glad I came over here because that was really ripe. And as soon as I thought that, I turned around and she said, hi, I'm Michelle. Oh. And I seen her eyes water up. I was like, wow, this is the worst way to meet somebody. Maybe she was back there farting, too. Yeah, maybe she had gone to you know, I never thought the about that. How was she right. might have been? What is she what doing back there? What were you doing back there? Exactly. That's an embarrassing story. Uh, it's not embarrassing. It it's is. It's not embarrassing because everyone farts. Yes. That's the reason why I was able to tell that story. Because I know that whoever's reading, if you want to go, that was really nasty. You're, you're saying that, yeah, that was really nasty. Because you fart, too, so I could talk about it. Here's something else yeah. I found interesting, too. And people, I, I always tell you, Robin, mm -hmm. that uh -huh. uh, Comedy Central is uh, really <laughs> shitty when it comes to paying people. Okay. Uh, Charlie was paid, he admits this in his book, $500 an episode for the Chappelle show. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. So everyone was. Everyone was. Isn't that incredible? 500 bucks and for the show. And they've been, that, that catapulted yeah. them yeah. 
into well, we're not the gonna, stratosphere. We're not going to, uh, right now, we're not going to bash Comedy Central. Because <laughs> That's because they, will they be bought it. my one hour special in February. <laughs> but it makes they me are be- number one with Charlie. <laughs> yeah, but it makes me believe that you were not paid a lot of money for the special. Am I no, correct? I got paid. I you got get- paid. But at that point, it was... Uh, it was, uh, you get paid when when there's no other alternative. When it's like, okay, I can go somewhere else, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's the reason why I don't I don't really uh, look at them and go, you uh, robbed me or anything like that. When I was on the Chappelle show before the show took off, they were doing me a tremendous uh, 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 grace by letting me be on the show right. once a week. I was on national television. I had never had an opportunity like that. And you were able and to prove you were funny. take the opportunity and, and make it into something else where I made... You know, I'm not going to go into it with a lot of money. Right. So, you know, yeah. So I, it's not like I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, at a deficit from the experience. If Saturday Night Live came to you right. and said, you know, it, you've proven that you are a good sketch performer. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they said to you, look, we want you to be on Saturday Night Live, would you take that job? Oh, absolutely. You would? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Saturday Night Live is, uh, is an institution, you know. Right. Um, of, of course, I would take the job. Have they ever approached you after, no, after they Chappelle? Haven't. They haven't. Don't you but, think that's a little shocking? I mean, you proved it's not. No, like I don't think anything is shocking as far as what's taking place because I have not experienced a lull in work. You right. know what I'm saying? I've yep. been working. So whoever didn't step up and say we got a check for you, I didn't even notice you because I'm getting checks. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting. Yep. I'm working. I'm working constantly. I have more work than I need. Right. So. Whoever didn't happen to be in line with a check or, or, or with an opportunity, uh, it's not shocking to me at all. And I look at it as, at the right time, I will have a, a relationship with whoever. I, I will work with you or this one and that one. It's just a matter of me uh, getting to that point in my career, you know? Here's a couple other things that I didn't know this about you. This is all from your book, the mm-hmm. new one. Charlie and his brother Eddie once got into a big fight over trivial family shit. They didn't talk for three years. Wow. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. had to kill you, man. Yeah, it did. It yeah. did. It did. So you guys really had bad blood for a while. It wasn't bad blood. It was... Uh, what was the big argument? Stiff neck uh, ignorance. Uh, it was. I don't know what it was over. How I forget. It was... Uh, thing where we was I think it was debating over something that was in the newspaper or whatever and it got really we both have a uh, strong personality not strong personality but the refusal to back down gene we right. both have that all right so that that let that 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 kept that escalated into something that was totally uh had nothing to do with what, what the initial argument was and became uh you know uh ball juice uh, session, you know, whose balls are the biggest type right. thing. And then the not talking to each other was just an uh, extension of that, you know. Was the argument over the fact that you farted in front of his co-star? <laughs> <laughs> Could be, right? Who knows? Who remembers? We had an argument. We stopped talking to each other. If anything, I should stop talking to Michelle Pfeiffer right for three years. But, you know. I'll bet you the argument was about, because you didn't, you even said to me, you did not like Eddie's wife when he was married at the time. Uh, I never said that. I thought you didn't like her. Nicole, I never said that. You like her? Yeah, man. Oh, you did? I love her. I, don't, I never said that. I, didn't like I had her. her in here. I met her. She seemed like yeah. a nice woman. I love her. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say I didn't like her. And she didn't bad mouth uh, anybody? She didn't bad mouth Eddie or you? She can. I, we're good guys, man. Right. So everything's cool. I mean, yeah. I didn't, I, I didn't have no problem with her. I love her. That's my sister in law forever. And uh, the the argument was over some. It was over something like a, uh, who made this record or who. It, it was really <laughs> something stupid. Yeah. You know, I think. So I how think did you Boots make up? Collins made no. You, no, so and so made it. No, I think Boots. It, the way we made up was, you know, we was. I was at the China Club, and he was there, and we seen each other, and we looked each other in the eye, and, and we was getting ready to walk right past each other, and, and it was like, you know, uh, that's not masculine. Yeah, it's that's, silly. So I said, "What's up, man?" And he said, "What's up?" And we started talking, and it was like nothing happened. That's good. That. You know? This is kind of heavy. I didn't know this. Your father was murdered by his girlfriend. Yeah. Who when stabbed him while old. he slept. What, when yeah. you were 10 years old, 10 years old your yeah. father was killed by his girlfriend. Yeah. And, and, and man. And that, but, but when that happened, you know, my father and mother had not, they weren't together anymore. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And my mother was actually uh, remarried to the man that raised me the rest of my life. So I was talking to my son about that. I said, you know, it's funny. You're 10 years old and, and your mom just lost your mom. When I was 10 years old, I lost my dad. Right. Uh, what happened to my son explains to me 
what happened to me more. It's like, okay, this is the reason why you lost your dad, or, or, or more, it has something that's Italian. Because now you have someone that you can has, have to help heal, and you've had, and you have shared experience with them. You, you so did, the same thing. helping your son work through this is helping you? No, I'm saying, oh, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm able to help him work through it better because I experienced it. It's not yeah, like this, you went this happened it. to me, too. That's some know? weird stuff. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's kind of weird, too. I mean, I, I was reading about your life, and, you know, when I, it, it, you actually uh, remind me a lot of stuff about Roosevelt. Yeah, because, Roosevelt. And you make the point. Roosevelt is where I grew up, and mm-hmm. I've talked about it a lot on the show. And when Charlie writes about it, he makes a very good point. It's a very dangerous neighborhood, and yet when you look at it, it, right. Sometimes it looks like a middle class sort of... It's like the of, Venus flat trap. It looks pretty. It, it, it looks you pretty, but when you sit down there for a minute, uh, you're going to get, you know... You get your ass kicked. You get eaten up. Yeah. You know, yeah. because when I, I did that thing on 60 Minutes, I hadn't... I, purposely haven't gone back to Roosevelt since my parents agreed to move from there. And, my, mm. and it was a very big disappointment to my parents that uh, they had to move because of me. Mm. Uh, my parents felt they should stay in Roosevelt, one of the few white families they did not want to leave. My mother was on this whole kick, wanted to prove she wasn't afraid of black people, blah, 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 blah. Well, blah, she whatever. was hoping that it would be all right, right. I'm sure. Well, yeah. Well, now it's but Roosevelt it was the cornucopia of just people. Yeah. You, you have everything there, but you have a gang on almost every block. You, you know do. What I'm and people don't and know Roosevelt's that. Roosevelt's only one square mile. Wow. You know, what's going on. You, know, you yeah. come out and start shooting out with your neighbor because you're all in separate gangs you know, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I lived there yeah. way too long for a scared white boy, I'll tell you that. It was not pleasant. Well, how it, and you know, however you, you felt when you left out of there by Roosevelt, I think I shared a feeling. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> You're afraid to go back. I'm a scared know, black guy, scared to go to Roosevelt. I described, I had white friends. Roosevelt's become too much for me. Yeah, it's too much. I, I had white friends who would come visit me and say, we want to see black people. Back then, they, they were from lily white neighborhoods. And mm-hmm. they'd say, don't come here. It's yes. very scary. And they came, and they went running out of there like an episode of the Monsters. They would just tear ass out. My friend would go out at night, and he'd come but back then. And, when the, the things y'all was talking about, I remember that whole energy. And that, when I first went to Roosevelt, what I noticed was that there was a a large population of guys that appeared to be bodybuilders. I mean, they had Mr. Universe bodies. They didn't lift any weights. How'd they get them? They, they just ate grits and was like that. <laughs> right. Yes. And they was picking up cars and throwing them. And I was like, yo, where, where are we at, man? When the guys pick up cars. Like maybe two or three of them flip the car over at the, at the pep rally. Right. You know, roll a boulder onto the... I'm like, yo, who are these guys? How come they have all this power? Well, what was weird to me was not only who are these guys and, and why do they have so much power, but how are they in the same grade as me? Right. I mean, a whole they, bunch of them. Guys with full facial hair, and I'm in and, ninth grade. See, now if you go to Roosevelt, you don't see all the big buff guys. You just see guys with big buff guns. Yeah. It just changed all of it. It's, yeah. a, it's a whole different thing there. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? You actually brought back a memory because you talked about the fact that you were in the five percenters. And yeah, I was me, in the five percent nation. Yeah. And to me that scared the crap out of me. There were guys in my class in the five percenters. And most you know, most white people don't know what five percenters are, but back then they were tougher than the Crips, the Bloods or anything. And there were guys in my class who were in five percenters. Mm-hmm. And they told me, you will die, take off your pants now, and give them to me. Yeah. <laughs> and you will not live past your 16th birthday. And yeah. you would just shit your pants. And, and like Charlie says, these guys, I don't know, they, they look like grown men. They were grown men. <laughs> they guess. were. You know, um, that, that was something, you know, always with me throughout my life, there was always a, uh, a search, if you want to call that, for, for what is beyond us. You know what I'm saying? I tried uh, Catholicism. My, my mother was had me baptized a Catholic. She was baptized a Catholic, but it didn't work for me. You know, I didn't yeah. identify with the the characters that was being displayed and who's what or whatever. It didn't work for me. And then I was introduced to black nationalism. Right. And uh, you know, growing up black and being you know uh, you know uh, subjected to certain institutional racisms in in this country, black nationalism was like perfect. Right. For me, I sucked it right up like a sponge, got into it. I learned a lot from it. But, you know, I, I continued to evolve as a human to where I was like, you know what, even that is uh, not going to work for me because 
I'm not a racist in any any form or fashion. I don't have I don't look at other people and have preconceived notion about you. You don't have to earn my respect. You earn my disrespect. I relate you know to you. And so, I, so I, that's I, why I'm not a member of any uh, organized religious group. Listen, I believe in God, but I don't need to talk to a man with, with a uniform on or with a, whatever outfit he has to get to him. You like know? yourself, I tried to join black nationalism. They didn't want me. <laughs> I, uh, that would have been my way out of all the danger. But Charlie makes a point. Uh, Why does the religious leader always have a special outfit? Well, it's like the, a rock star. You yeah. Know. Rock yeah. stars have special outfits, too. Well, the 5%, I remember uh, there was a religious element. Like, you couldn't eat pork and all yeah, that. You can't, it's a lot of things. Yeah, it, yeah. You can't eat pork, uh, you know, and uh, that was a real hard one for me. But these were I'm tough be, guys. I'm going to be honest. It, 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 that was very hard. <laughs> you broke that rule? Yes. <laughs> that wasn't the Yes, I broke the rule. How would I yeah. ate bacon? You were some five percent. Yeah, and I would go out. Yeah, yeah, I was some five percent. I would come in the house. My mother would say, when I joined the five percent nation, my mother was like, so, uh, I said, yes, I don't, I don't eat pork no more. I'm God. She said, you who? I said, I'm God. <laughs> you God. You don't eat pork no more. Okay. Okay, uh, Omar. Uh, so, uh, I guess you'll just be having rice tonight. <laughs> yeah. I said, yes, I will have this rice tonight. Right. And I had rice for dinner the first night, and the next night she made pork again. So, oh, I guess you'll just be having greens tonight. Uh, yes, I will be having greens. <laughs> After about four days of that, I was like, bring on the bacon. Yeah, this is bullshit. Bring the meat out. I got to eat. Yeah, you were you know? hungry. That's uh, that's the truth. So uh, the other thing too is that um, so then you then you fell into some, uh, let's say uh, some some bad situations, gang type well, you know, situations, yeah, you know, crime. Out in Roosevelt, they had they had a, a it was like a, a exodus. It was a lot of people moving from the city to the, to, to Long Island around the same mm-hmm. time. So and then there was the, the the people who had been there already. They, they were just there. So when I got to Roosevelt, I was in uh, seventh grade, and there was like five other guys who came from the boroughs that all moved out there, and we were the out the outcasts, right? Because we were from the city, we weren't accepted as one of the, 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 these other kids had known each other from kindergarten. So we were the new people, and uh, that you know that, that resulted in fighting. You had to fight to, to, to establish yourself in the pecking order. <laughs> and after school, the, uh, the school uh, administrator and everything back then was told. Like, when I read the paper now, they go, "Yes, this kid went to school and struck another person and was arrested and, and prosecuted." That didn't happen back then. No. You only wish it would have happened. That didn't, that, you could go yeah. home with your eyes swollen, and your parents would just be like, put some ice on. <laughs> right. They wouldn't even think, like, I'm calling the cops. Yeah. Like now, you know what I'm saying? But back then, it was totally different. And, and they would actually be waiting in front of the school with chains and bats for a student to come out. The principal's office is facing them with the window wide, and he would never think... Maybe I should call the police. Never. You'll get dusted off right there in front of his office. That's that's how Roosevelt was. That's how Roosevelt was. They dusted mm-hmm. him off. A girl dusted him off. I stood in the class, and the teacher, um, uh, a guy took me and was choking me, and I passed out. Uh, I was just about out. And the teacher then um, uh, threw a piece of chalk at me for causing a disturbance. I mean, Sounds it was like, like Roosevelt. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, it was like... Sounds like Roosevelt. Every, yeah, it Roosevelt. was crazy. It was like mental crazy it was off the hook and uh, yeah. I, when, you, when i look back on it like again it's, it's proof to me that there's such thing as god because in my life because i left yeah. and when i came back all of the fancy people were gone you know it was like well, what happened to so-and-so he's dead what happened to that one he's dead what happened to this one he's dead what happened to that one he's been dead yeah. you know like everybody was decimated everybody was gone man yeah. you know except for the ones that went to prison you know, so out of all my friends, I have, like, one friend, and he was a guy who even back then would say, uh, y'all getting ready to do what? Uh, oh, I- I'll see you when you get back. Yeah. He's still around. Right. But he had a different, uh, you know, uh, it, it, his whole uh, his pedigree was slow. He, slow. he took life slower. He wasn't in a rush to do anything, get anywhere. And he's still like, he, he's just still like a, a laid back dude. And he never got in no trouble. I still wonder what was wrong with my parents that they kept me there. You know what I mean? They they had the money to move out. Like, what was that whole trip? Like, what? what like, I, I don't know. Put, they might have been like, you know, just. But I would never put my parents kids in a dangerous situation. That was their situation. first home that they bought as a married couple. Yes. So the, the house had sentiment. 
and they just didn't want they had memories attached to it, and they didn't want to be driven away from their home. And everybody's first house is their dream house. Like, yeah. Oh my, yeah, I got a house, and, and then you that dream house was my nightmare. <laughs> That's yeah. all I'm telling you right That's now. The <laughs> You're not you, they raised their family there, so they don't want to leave that. You know, nah, I don't know. I think my old man was holding on to the twenty. He, he paid fourteen thousand for that house. He yeah, had a gold why would he want to get another house? That's and that right. house probably now is worth you know like seven hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand. <laughs> I don't know. Same house. Who knows? Yeah. I think they just hated me. <laughs> Who knows what it was? Uh, let's go to Nick. Uh, by the way, so uh, Charlie's here to celebrate the. Uh, Making of a stand-up stand up guy. guy. It's yep. in stores now. The book's out on, uh, what's your publisher? Simon Schuster. Nice. And you can also go on www.charliemurphycomedy.com. That's my website, and you can you can buy the book right off my website. Yeah, there's a lot of it's good it. stories in there. And Barnes and Noble. It ain't a boring life, I'll tell it, you that. Yeah, not a boring life at all. That's why I wrote the book. I, I was like, you know what? Your life is worthy of being a story. And that's what I did. Nick, you're on the air in Lake Tahoe. Thanks again, Howard. Hey, hey uh, Charlie, I was wondering What's up, uh, Nick? when you and your brother were in high school, who got more pussy than? I got a feeling. Oh, you me, did. because I was uh, I was interested in it. You know, he was interested in telling jokes. Isn't yeah. it funny? I mean, how... He had a girlfriend and everything, but you know, he had he was he was really pretty much more uh, married to comedy back then than I, I was married to no one. And so, uh, better fighter in same... high school. I was the oldest brother, man. That that yeah. goes without explanation. Okay. You know, you know what's funny too. <laughs> Isn't it funny how you took the life of crime? You got into trouble. You went to jail and this and that, mm. and that like Eddie didn't somehow. You well, know? he had a good example of what not to do. Yeah, all he had you. to do was go. Uh, uh, I see what happens when you go down that street. Yeah, because Charlie went down there, and I seen all this fire. Yeah, and, you know, on his own own ass. In so a way, you think know, you yeah. saved him in a sense. And the way I think, I you know, I I was an example that for everybody in my family that because I have cousins too. None of them ever got in trouble. It, it, everyone was talking about me. Like, you see what happened when he did that. Is that hard to be that guy, the the, no, it's the very black hard. sheep of the family? It's real hard and it's real uh, lonely. Yeah, you know, you feel uh, you know, like you're the fuck up you, or something. Yeah, you start questioning why why am I that? Why am I this dude with that everybody? All the adults go, oh, he's watch out for him. They tell their kids. And don't be going on, run off with this one. I always you know, think it's you, an interesting. See, this is why you I think your book. Bad, yeah. This is why I think your book is interesting. It's it's it, sure it's interesting to read about like uh, the life of uh, Eddie Murphy, but to talk to the brother who had to sit there and experience sort of being the black sheep of the family while this brother's having all this big success, and then suddenly you. In the end, become the hero. You find your success. Yeah. You find your own way. It's a much more interesting story, isn't it, in a way? Yeah, and it's, it's also one of the reasons why, I, when they asked me to write a book, I was, you know, receptive. I was like, yeah, we, we can do that because, uh, yeah, the fact that I went through what I went through and lived throughout what I lived, it was all, I'm not blaming on anyone. It was because of my own choices. But when I look back at the whole, the whole uh, journey, it was really a truly a journey. You know? and thank God you redeemed yourself. Cause you could you imagine the misery you'd be in? Oh you yeah, didn't? man. Yeah, I, I I think about a lot a lot of points in my life where I was standing on the detonation button, totally oblivious to it, jumping up and down. Was that it. lowest point jail? Yeah, it, it was. It was jail was one of them. I wouldn't say the lowest point was jail. Uh, there was times after jail when I I didn't go to jail where I was just. Uh, Waiting to be harvested, man. As far as I'm concerned, now when I look back at it now, you were you were just a, a waiting to be harvested, and they just didn't come to do it that day. What do you mean waiting to be harvested? Well, you see people that have a lifestyle that is dangerous. You know, you you uh, you hang out around uh, you know bad people. You know, you have bad uh, intentions. You carry on a negative life. You know, a negative existence, and when you're doing that. You draw negative stuff to you. So, so you're you saying been... people could have come to right. kill you. What I'm saying is being negative is going to attract more negativity. What and did you go to jail for? I know you talk about it. In well, the I book. said a million little shits because. <laughs> Where did they get you? Where they pinch you? <laughs> pinch me for uh, uh, robbery, right? No, that I went. I didn't go to jail for that. I got that was my first uh, arrest, and you know that's what started the whole jail thing, but. What I what I eventually went for was violation of probation because I kept getting arrested after that. But the first arrest was this guy. For robbery. Robbing yeah. what? A, a cab driver? A cab, or driver. cab oh, driver. Oh, with a yeah. gun? 
Yeah, with a gun, yeah. Wow. With a big, rusty, if we was fired, it probably would have blew up in our hands. But the whole thing was... How old were you back then? When that happened, I was 17. 17 years yeah, old. Misguided, misguided. Misguided energy. You know, that's why it's important to have in, in your communities, it's important to have an outlet for young men to go and, and uh, you know, let this, let this energy off. Because if you don't do that... They, they they let it off some other way, negative, you know? You Same. had a stepfather who was pretty involved in your life, right? Right, right. And but he also had to work, like, you know, crazy hours, like, you know, 15, 16 hours a day, sometimes six days a week. And a teenager figures that out and figures ways to... Uh, Get around. Get around it. Yeah. How'd, you, how'd you get caught robbing the cab driver? It sounds like you, you bungled the job. It was stupid. That's how we got caught. Uh, how, how, what was you the... Know, how, like how everybody else that tries to, to do some dumb shit. You get, <laughs> come on, man. It's dumb shit. You, had, how, you ain't getting away with that. You got the dough. You had the dough in your hand, and you get out. Yeah, but... Where do you what go? Happened was this, walk this away? This is exactly how we got caught. All right. There was four guys, right? One guy, <clears throat> one guy who the other three guys are... Influenced by but, is straight from juvie. Right. He has a criminal record that good spans back to when he was uh, in first grade or whatever. Right. He's the ring. He's the one that everybody's trying to impress and hanging out with him. <laughs> what he's is the wrong one that with shows you? up with the gun and talks the slick talk or whatever. And he's the one that the police, when they seen us, they seen us that night, and they said, well, "What are these guys between the ages of uh, fifteen and seventeen? What are they doing walking the streets?" At three in the morning on a weeknight, it's right. tomorrow's school. Right. They just thought that had the thought. They didn't say anything to us. And then when the report came that a robbery had just taken place, three guys blah blah blah. blah. Description. The cop was like, "Well, I just seen the three guys, and I, and one of them was so and so because we arrested him on a regular, and he was with two other guys. So we're gonna go see him tomorrow." They went to see him, and he got in the car and pointed everybody else. He out. gave you up. He ratted you out. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to tell you something, man. Uh, the technique they use, they actually still use it. Because if you watch that show, First 48, everybody comes in the same way. I ain't telling you nothing. <laughs> Where's my lawyer? Hey, I, I don't know nothing. And then they go, listen, why, why be so hostile? You look a little hungry. Would, would you like a Big Mac? And you see the person stinking. Uh, you yeah, Okay. And then they go to commercial. When they come back, he has the Big Mac in his hand, the soda, and he's going. And he's talking. He's telling. Yeah. <laughs> I told him not to kill her, but you know, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it yeah. terrible to be sold out for a Big, a Big Mac? Mac it, take you know how many people talk. are doing life in prison right now because of Big Mac? Because they made a confession. <laughs> it's unbelievable. For you would a think. Sandwich. Just for learn a sandwich. to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> yep. They go in there soon. They bring their hungry. Big Mac out. Mm. The it, it, whole story got, told. Of course, the guy wants a Big Mac. He's only been eating. Rice since he went on the five percent program. It's unbelievable. It is. So, so, so you're right. It's always the guy who kind of is experienced gets the other two guys involved, and then and then and then I guess they come and arrest you. And your mother must have been. Oh, like, that was devastating. Man, he oh, came yeah. to the house and all that. But see, I used that experience to raise my kids. That came in handy with my kids. But how'd you get out of that? I mean, how did you not do any jail time over that? I did do jail time. Over oh, that one? No, no, the... this, this one? I was 17 when it happened. Right. I oh. wasn't 18. So they put you in juvie. So, no, I, I got arrested and they bailed me out. And uh, there was a uh, court uh, process I went through. And back then they used to have this thing called adjudication. Right. And I, I was adjudicated a juvenile, first offender, and allowed to get a second chance, like a mulligan of sorts. Right. You can, you know long as you don't get in no more trouble, have your record expunged, blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay. And my mother was like, you can't get in no trouble no more. But I was still hanging with the same people, doing the same things, and uh, I kept getting in trouble. Yeah. And it, it, it became... Uh, so how much time did you have to do in jail when you violated pro solid probation? Solid 10 months. 10 months? Yeah. And that and that it, must have been that scary. That was out of a year sentence. I did a solid 10 months. Where did you, you do to, it? It wasn't scary at all, how, because you, all my friends was in there. Oh, really? You didn't have to fight? Yeah, but I liked it. I liked it, so that... That wasn't an issue with me. You mean you but like where fighting? did you do this time? Yeah. You like was, fighting? Yeah. You were good at it. Yeah. So you got the prison. I, I think if you if you're good at it, that helps you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you kicked a bunch of ass. Oh, we did. Yeah, we did all of that, man. But you, you know? where, where did you do this time? 
Nassau County Jail. Nassau. Did the I family still, they still got poems written on the wall there by Charlie Murphy? <laughs> that's right. That's a very that's famous wall. That's an original wall. Charlie Murphy. That's, that's right. <laughs> did, did, did your parents try to keep you away from Eddie in the sense that okay, yeah, he's the bad became, influence? Right. And, See, that's interesting. It became, it became. Look, you, you are, bad. Are not going to ruin him. Him. Right. him, not them. Him, them. Right. Him and my brother Brian. Right. We love you, but you. A poisonous. Mm. So my mother packed up a box with canned goods and rice and all that and gave me a little suitcase and took me to a rooming house and gave me uh, rent for a month. I never went back home from there. Scary time in your life, right? Scary time, but you know what? Uh, that experience helped me because now I look at these kids now. I was 17. I look at these kids now, 27, 28, living with their mother. And I go, you know what, man? You really ought to be taking Brandon back. So when you're 17, you got shot. But when you're 17 and your mother kicks you out of the house and says to you, "Look, you're a bad influence on the other two boys." Yeah, that that uh, devastated me, man. And that, that was. Uh, what do you do for to make money? Don't you fall into more crime? Oh, I, I tried to go straight and get a uh, legitimate job. I was working. I don't know if you remember the Cedar program. Yes, they give you a job for 18 months. Right. And uh, I got the job, and, and it, they. <laughs> My my personality lost me the job. <laughs> Did you fight with your boss? No, they had me. They had me with this uh, crew, and I was eighteen. And everybody else in the crew was in their forties. I wake up in the morning happy. I wake up bright. I don't understand how you know the whole groggy thing people go through when they're quiet. <laughs> uh, I'm not a morning person. I I wake up like yo, this popping. So every morning these old dudes would be trying to you know wake up. <laughs> And I would be a live wire, and I would talk about their false teeth, talk about their their big shoe or whatever was wrong with the niggas. These, you know, they was in their forties and fifties. These guys started break bodies started breaking down. Was this in the and garment industry? To, no, we, we garment. was working. In, uh, <laughs> we was working for the Nassau uh, County Department of Public Works, and our job was to go around to all the p water pump houses, and we uh, repainted the uh, water pump house right. inside and out. And those guys wanted me off their crew. They was like, look, we can't take him the first thing in the morning. <laughs> you were too... Everything is funny. You were too high energy. Yeah, he, he comes, it's like a, a, a live wire. We're trying to wake up. This guy's laughing loud. He's talking about my shoes. <laughs> so then finally, you, were, you had an abrasive personality as far as they were yeah. concerned. Yeah. Well, they that's called it. me into the office and said, you're going to have to stay at base camp today in... in, in you know yeah. what it was? You were 18. The job was kind of fun. For them, it wasn't so funny. They were in their 40s. It was 40s. their career. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it wasn't looking too good. Well, it's fascinating. Let's uh, quickly, uh, because we're running out of time, the book is called The Making of Stand-Up Stand Guy. The Making of a Stand-Up Guy. Uh, Mark in Boston, go ahead real quick. Hey, now. Uh, yeah, no, I had actually worked at the DPW. had the same fucking thing. You sit around and play cards all day, and, and uh, yeah, they get mad because you're working too hard. You make them look bad. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, Charlie. What's your uh, what's your comment on uh, the Tiger Woods and, and the Charlie Sheen situation? I know you had women, you know, that uh, might do a couple of things. What's your what's your what's your take on that? Tiger Woods playing this. Tiger Woods thing is different from Charlie Sheen. It man. sure is. It yeah. really is. Two, Charlie, to totally different situation. Don't you think man. it's weird how Hollywood accepts Charlie Sheen and applauds him at award shows and stuff, and he's putting a knife to a woman's throat allegedly? Well, you don't know what she might have done, Howard. I yeah. don't know. Well, that, that's again. what I always say. You do. That's what I, I mean, always say. There's two what sides to every story. So you, that's, that's assault. She should be in jail. So you say there's two sides to every story. Right. And that, there's two uh, sides to every story, and we all, we all get one, usually. Well, that's what Which Charlie has, Sheen's publisher said. He says it would be wise if we don't jump to any conclusions. I right. Think. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. he said he put a knife to her throat or whatever, but yeah. they're getting back their record silence. So obviously... Uh, doesn't seem right to me. It wasn't as serious though. as we think it is. Tiger Woods, though, I mean, what's a uh, boy? He's lost a lot of money in there. Uh, lost a lot. It's, it's, it, you know. with, him, with him, man, I just want to say this. With everything that he's losing, he didn't get any of it uh, for being faithful to his wife. He got it from being the best golfer in the world. That's right. You know what That's I'm saying? not true, Charlie. That, he that got it true. from being. All of his trophies, all of his wins. All of his, they uh, didn't take wins, those. All of his wins uh, and I'm talking about his endorsements. Yeah. His endorsements are a result of him being the best golfer in the world. Not every one of them. When, yeah. you, when a company buys your image as this 
lily, you know, white, cleaner than clean, you know, stand up kind of guy, faithful family man. And they put their, you know, their name next to yours because they want to be identified with all of these positive qualities you're portraying. They have bought your image. They haven't just bought your golf course. That sounds like what they probably told him before they took his check. (laughs) Is he a sex addict? No, what I'm saying is this. The reason why I even watch golf is because Tiger Woods plays golf. If he didn't play golf, I would not watch golf. I would not have no interest in golf. Right. Okay? And I think that I'm not the only one that's that's on that. I think that most people today that watch... 